Cheers to episode 187 is what I have written down. Cheers. Cheers. Water. Grant not writing off playoffs less than 1%. There's zero, it's zero, Alex. Thanks. Oh, oh God. You didn't, in the gray first three seconds of the show. So good. I know. That was, that was really disrespectful God to rip that damn. off. I don't even know hey, what you're, week. What you're Welcome, drinking. Oh, week. I should put that Get them out now. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. Oh, I'm already dead. You can't, you can't trash talk me. I'm dead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save my for later. I was okay. a good boy, and I rewatched the Michigan Illinois game because I didn't watch much of it on Saturday. You rewatched that piece well, of okay, garbage. What, what, what did you rewatch? The Michigan Illinois game. <laughs> no, you didn't. I grant hand up. Swear to God, that's, that's the first time you've ever done something. Like Evan, that. that's disgusting. Okay, so that's sat- was- uh, no, Saturday I didn't really get to watch much of it. I was at a tailgate, so I was eating dinner this afternoon. I was on Big Ten Network, just eating dinner, and then that that game started. But the remote was all the way across the room. I just didn't feel like getting up and getting it. Halfway through it, I was like, well, might as well watch the rest of it. Your team tomorrow might score zero points if you subconsciously took anything away from that game. Like, you, you actually <laughs> made yourself a worse football I coach watching that. that game. I kind of laughed through a lot of it. Yeah. I didn't laugh. I, I That was my tipping point. I got some text messages about you on Saturday. <laughs> it was shown what was texted. <laughs> I, I was said, on the phone when the, she sent those, but... I'm going to go back and reread them now. I know exactly when it happened. I know when she got mad at me for complaining. I, I know exactly the play. I thought about it today. Did you get yelled at for saying stop complaining? It's just a football game? This is rock bottom. We'll save it for the for the show. That's even but. worse. So it was rock uh, bottom for Grant on Saturday, <laughs> apparently. Difference. Hasn't it been three weeks since we gave our top ten or no? It's only been two uh, weeks. Two weeks. Two. It was right before LSC, which was a whirlwind. Oh, oh. Chris Godwin touched down. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. <laughs> And you traded him away. Ricky. Dude, I got good players back after <laughs> Josh Jacobs and George Pickens. You didn't even start George Pickens this week. Yeah, Shut up. I was benching him for his that- morale. Holding offense. Holding oh! offense. Coming back. I benched George Pickens to teach him a lesson. <laughs> oh, yeah, you taught him a lesson. All right, buddy. Don't call my – don't call – You responded. Uh, I'm in a slot merchant or you get benched. Yeah, that's why he's benched. And he'll be back next week for you, Evan. What's wrong with being a slot merchant? Like, what? What's it? He's all around. He wants to be an all around great receiver. I th- that it's it's cool, Nate. Well, I think what it means is that like you're not actually a good receiver. You just get easy routes to catch the ball. Is what he was like trying to say. Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro. I mean, careful. Be I'm careful on touching. Okay, yeah. you're you're finding your sweet spot. Yeah. Find the groove there. Oh, that's it. That looks good. Uh, so on this show, it's been a lot of football. Baseball's done. ALDS is done. Congrats to Evans Dodgers on making the World Series. Evan, I'm going to ride with you on that. I'm looking for their minus 122 to win the World Series, which I think is a little steep for me. I'm going to wait for hopefully a profit boost to get that to like plus money, and I'll take them to win the World Series. I think they're too good. I think they're just a complete the baseball best team. players are playing the best with runners on base. Important, as we saw in our series, to, you know, to drive people in when you have runners in the scoring position. But Shohei's like, super bad he's like the tigers hitting when no one's on base but you put somebody on base he's hitting over like 400 500 good movie super bad great movie great um no WNBA talk but i think the liberty won that so shout out to them heard the refing was a shit show i saw headlines on espn today that the uh, refing was a final, final play of the game was the joke final call of the game like when they called a moving screen on iowa against connecticut in the uh final four I mean, it was like a horrendous call that gifted the Liberty overtime. Mm. Horrendous. Uh, um, so, yeah, it'd be football, Pookies and Dookies, Lions, and then Michigan, Michigan State both had games, and we'll preview their matchup once a year. It comes hate week, Paul Bunyan week, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we'll get into that. Definitely two programs going in different directions. So we'll have, I'm sure, a lot of call and listener questions from radio people oh. about the, the Wolverines. <laughs> What's going to happen? Um, before we get into any sports, Alex, any updates from you outside of sports? No. It's okay. Keep it tight. Yeah. Evan? Updates. No game since we recorded, I think, based on oh, our I scheduling. Oh, I did play on Tuesday. Oh, you did? We scheduled. It did not go well. 
You didn't Got text spend. us. That should have yeah, been our first not, sign. Yeah, that should have <laughs> been your first sign. It did not go well. Fair weather, fair weather coach. You know, uh, I was thinking about it on the ride home. I was like, I'm just not going to text him. Uh, the whole 200 points, get to 200 points, and average no. one, seven points per half. Yeah, touchdown didn't, per half. Nope, didn't average that. Nope. Oh. So far. So far. You got zero. Like, like how far? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't score. Who'd you play? Monroe. Sounds great. Tied. 0-0. Zero, zero, final score. Wow. Wait. <laughs> swear to God. That was Michigan, Illinois. It was. <laughs> um, and then so, uh, eighth grade Illinois lost. Illinois didn't tie. Eighth grade lost 18 to 8. Oh. Tony. Yeah. And two-point conversion. Get in your bag. <laughs> Duffy. So this week is trick play week, right? <laughs> This week is – I don't know how many points I had to get, whatever I had last week. A like thousand. I was at an even number. I had – so I need I, – I think I'm at 178. All right. So 22 isn't too, too – I don't remember, Alex. I think you're at 168 or something. I don't know. I was at a whole number. You're probably, yeah, you're probably around 170. You're going to be like that coach that you got mad at. You're going to be running up the score, and they're going to yell at you across the field. You're going to be like, hey, I made a bet with my friends. I need 200. <laughs> And you can explain it to him after the game. Uh, we play Adrian, and um, they ran up Teach the score last year. So if we run oh. up the score, I won't feel bad. So, Coach, do you do um, – you know, both of our schools have had – Oh, f- only at 140 oh. points. Oh, oh, yikes. God. It's going to have to get – you're going to have to go air raid. Oh, God. You're so going to have to throw away the high school playbook. 148, so I need 52. So 25 each game. All right. Um, <laughs> you can tell he's stressed. <laughs> 20 points. So, Evan, I'm curious. I feel I like every, especially this week, every time you get into the press conferences uh, for Michigan, Michigan State coach, I remember with Mel Tucker and I remember it with Jonathan Smith now, the reporters always get in there, you know, couch and solar. They're like, how are you teaching the team about the rivalry? Like, That's what are you learning? Nice question. Well, Evan, what are you doing this week to teach your team about the Adrian rivalry? Do you pull out the history book about they ran through our banner one time? or like what I you- almost brought it up, but I didn't. <laughs> I'll never forget that memory. Core memory for me, Coach Schmidt screaming at all of us before we ran out there. It was awesome. Tell them about how um, back in the day when you played, some players hated Adrian so much they wouldn't step foot in their town that week. <laughs> I forgot we brought that up. Now. True story. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully your team knows the importance of the rivalry. They better. You bring, you bring in um, like a, you could do a PJ Fleck move. Your team show is it a home game or away game? Home. Okay, it doesn't work as well when you're home, but you could br- put a bunch of rakes on the sideline, like you're gonna rake up the maples. Like that's some PJ Fleck shit. You guys all oh, walk man. out with rakes, <laughs> run through the banner. I'd probably get my ass beat if I tried to do that. That would be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right well um anything else uh saturday night evening afternoon i spent mm. in east lansing right you went to the game i was at the game alive for the iowa game uh great time great tailgate um alex the new im building that's across from the Bresen center nice it is up it's not done oh but the <laughs> exterior walls of how big it actually is going to be is up you liked it or this thing's you... ginormous too big <laughs> yeah. like... it's big for an IM, but like a... size matters size does matter and that thing's fully sized tall and wide or just wide wide it's probably three four stories tall wow excited to see it what's it's just gonna host there a bunch go. of basketball courts in there as well I think it's like the brand new like spanking new IM building I think it's gonna just indoor take turf field I don't know that. The I don't know. Had a turf field, so indoor pool. The old one had that as well. Oh, Alex, the outdoor pool at I M West. They got rid of it. Parking lot. Oh. Well, that makes sense. It's an Can't actual in the winter. Lot. We walked out of the stadium, walking that way towards Munfield, Field, and I was like, "This looks totally different." And I was like, "Holy shit!" They turned the pool into a parking lot. Could you ever say comfortably you saw people swim in that pool? Uh, once. I think my <laughs> first year on campus, I saw <laughs> yeah. one time people were in that. Yeah. So that's why. There's a lot of times swimming. it was open. The pool looked nice. I was like, man, I wish we could jump in there. Swimming and dive team got caught, remember? 
Yes, I remember that. We're don't f- need a pool. We're officially in a alumni going back to their colleges talking about things that were different when we went age. Okay. It was so totally it hasn't different. Hasn't been that long. They turned my freshman dorm into a hotel already, so that's Whoa. how long it's been. Oh, that is that is actually big news. <laughs> Ross Hall, R.I.P. <laughs> Rip. Rip. Slept on the floor. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, you guys stayed there. It's a boutique oh. hotel now, or they're turning it into one. Yeah. Well, kind of a shithole, but like cool for your first year. Oh, great place. <laughs> I don't remember it being very nice. So many AliExpress jerseys were sent to that front desk that year. It's insane. Um, okay. On my end, I didn't do... Well, nothing crazy, I guess. It was Marissa's birthday, so happy birthday to her on Friday, the 18th. Went out to dinner um, that night. Had a really good dinner. I'm not going to say any unbelievable stuff, but it was it was very What's good. Dinner I've ever had. Probably top... Two dinners I've ever had. Top three to five dinner I've had in Rochester. So I'm going to limit it to Rochester, uh, but like pretty, really good restaurant. And then um, I had the best breakfast I've ever had. No. Um, Mark Andrews, touchdown. Hope you started correct. him. Now she's back. He's dropped on a lot of Grant, teams. We need to work on you saying correct. You just say it way too much. No, we need to work on you correcting me about saying correct. <laughs> you need to work Touché. on not saying everything is your favorite meal of all time, which is your bit that you're doing right now. Saturday morning went to a pottery. I don't know what it's called. It's like a pottery place. You can buy. Marissa wanted to do for her birthday. You, you know, remember like the kilns when we were in um, yes. elementary school? You make a little thing and they make she it out of clay. didn't make it tight enough. It blows up in the kiln. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Mrs. Obide would warn you about that. It's for Mrs. Peters. So it does blow up in the kiln. So they are they have all that already made for you, so you just pick out something and you paint it. So I painted oh, like a, a Game of Thrones nice. type wine oh, chalice. Grant, how did it turn out? His paint job is garbage. Not well, T B D we pick it up on Saturday. So we gotta see what the final product actually looks like. I, I didn't do a very good job. I got an inspiration, a picture I wanted to do like kind of like a um what's like the the trees in Game of Thrones? What's what's kind, the yeah, ones? but it kind of looked like that design, but it wasn't those colors. I should have done those colors looking back. I did a normal like brown and green type tree, but it kind of looked like it sprawled out. And on the other side, I did I did a bunch of grapes, like a grapevine for wine. It did not turn out. It was too much. I should have done less. Speaking of that, okay. Common just jumped out of the window for me. Uh, Whoa, spoilers, oh, everyone. Oh. Spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. King Common just committed suicide. <laughs> wow. And I just watched it. I never watched that season. That's one yeah. one part I missed. Pretty good season. Was Tom, they... I think I would do the same thing after what happened. Really to my good gift. Smoking hot wife. <laughs> oh yeah. Was his wife Marjorie? Yes. Yeah. God, you don't know anything about that show, do you? No. Cersei's wow. on the throne right now. Yes. Tyrion this... is. Oh, this Daenerys is seven... hand. Is this season seven? Six. Okay. And well, seven. Season seven's six. really good. Seven's really good. Just watched the last episode of Six. John is now the king in the north. And we just found out John's mother is Lyanna Stark. Hmm. Which great. You're probably not even familiar with any of that. So No, I am very familiar. Yeah, right. The YouTube video. And then Saturday night made a really good steak dinner. And that was pretty much it for the weekend. Action packed. Yep. Good food weekend. So why didn't uh, you and Marissa go to Michigan State for homecoming? Figured she'd want to do that, you know, be a good homecoming uh, lad. Her friends talked about it, going to a game. Their schedules didn't work well. I think the continuous string of night games doesn't help. Um, I don't know. Just didn't seem like there was much desire. I'm kind. Of, I was well, was be more her and the so Shana, much I was, desire that I want to go to the Indiana game now. I would actually, Whoa. you know, you know what? That might oh, be something you I should two look should into. Know. Oh, <laughs> Evan, let's let's offline this, as they say in the corporate world. Uh, Marissa's out of town that weekend. I can oh, be convinced. Oh, oh, boys in EL, <laughs> behave. Could we round up some of the group chat and go? We should go. Uh, let me uh, write the, myself a sticky note. Where do people stay? <laughs> let me write we'll offline it. We'll offline it. Yep, but I don't know what logistics look like. I'll get a hotel. Eleven three. For Kurt, it yeah. might be at noon. Would you guys beat my ass if I bought IU gear? I would not. I wouldn't. <laughs> care. If I was there, I would beat your ass, but I won't be there. 
All right. What weekend is that game? Is that next week? No, no. it's the third. Well, the next week. First weekend of November. Yeah. Do we have a buy after Michigan? No. You're right. We have a second buy. Wait, so it's not this week. It's next weekend, right? Christ, Two weeks? This week it's Michigan. Right. I said next. I know, but, is it next week? Right, you guys right said no. It. Correct. It's Next week next is week. technically – I guess it technically is next weekend. Next week is technically next week. This weekend is Michigan. Next weekend is Indiana. This week is Michigan. Next week is Indiana. I just said that. You're just parodying me now. I'm just making sure you guys know that I was correct. Okay. All right. Let's look at. We'll look into that. Prices might be skyrocketing. <laughs> no, I mean that's a huge game. We don't know kickoff either. It's either noon or three thirty. Yeah. Not night though. Three thirty apparently could be on Peacock. Ohio State. Ew. Penn State is noon, so I hope it's not noon. I would like three thirty. Noon would be if on I'm going. Fox Sports One. Oh, it, all right. That might depend, though. If it's noon, I may not go because that I'm not staying the night before. I don't, I, and that's an early drive to tailgate. I'll do it. Whatever. We'll think. We'll, 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 oh, we'll think my but Kerma Field fumble. Alex. Oh. <laughs> you can turn this into a watch along with me to Monday Night Football. Bukerma Field has fumbled. Speaking of football, Pookies and Dookies. Of the week, football time. We were just talking about them. I'll start us off with a pookie. Once again, a common theme this year. You can't talk about, was this week eight? You can't talk about week eight of college football without talking about the Indiana Hoosiers. Got a huge uh, game, a huge national spot on big noon kickoff, and they just blew the doors off of Nebraska. And now they are a top 15 team ranked ahead of Alabama in the AP poll. So good for them. Oh, jinx. Dukey, Alabama. Oh, sad Dukey for Alabama and Dukey Kalen DeBoer, who I'm a believer in. He might get run out of Tuscaloosa already. That's how crazy their fan base is. As DeBoer guys, there's no uh, no long term worry about him, is there? More no. just the short term growing pains. No, more so like Alabama's boosters and alumni just like fire. Lost two but games. and then he goes to Michigan, and then my life ends because that means Michigan gets good again. Yeah, I would do bad things for Kalen DeBoer. I would donate to an NIL fund for that. I would give. Whoa. I would give. I would give a hundred dollars of my paycheck to Kalen DeBoer yes. for that. One hundred percent. Hear that, Michigan? <laughs> yeah. The earthquake from a donor. Yes. Here's five dollars. Evan, um, who's it out to you? Good Alex, or bad? I got a question for you. Answer oh. daily okay. no. Just just tell me if this stat line's good or not. Oh god. Nineteen for twenty nine. I know the player. I'm not gonna spoil it. Two hundred and ninety eight yards. It's Peyton Thorn. Three touchdowns. One loss. Average yards ten per reception. And he had a QBR of ninety six point five. Is that a good stat? This is- Avery Johnson. Avery Johnson. Saturday <laughs> night, not. baby. I don't think he's bad. I've never said he was bad. My Kansas State Wildcats <laughs> won again. So, Colby, suck it. We're going to have problems when you, they end up playing Iowa State. Be I'll awesome. be quiet until then, but I'm, we're going to have problems. Well, we got to watch out for BYU. They will not lose. They won't lose. But okay. on that graphic, BYU is like so far left. And then like I was reading the comments on that. I was like, BYU can't get keep on getting away with this. Yeah, they this should have a, lost for sure. This, this is a spike pookie for Evan. The Colorado Buffaloes are five and two, dominant victory over Arizona. They beat looking up on good bad under teams, Dion, which they're supposed they're looking to. Looking good under Dion, but any good team they face, they just they lose. I don't. Know, they look pretty. Dion's good. gonna leave after this year when his oldest leaves because they're gonna be bad. Only, uh, only one offense. Big Twelve loss. Michigan. Huh. I'm just I can't do that for every coach. I'm just joking. I gotta stop that bit. It's too early. Is it? Well, stay tuned. Uh, okay, Pookie, big Pookie, the Georgia Bulldogs. Never bark alone. I barked alone on Saturday night. I think never. the world was on Texas. I I really do think they were. Evan, I mean, that's a conflicting game for you. You love Texas, but you're also a Georgia guy. So Texas. that was first love was Texas. I was on Texas. Okay. Um, FanDuel, if you look for national title odds, I'd like to get a pulse of the country. They are national title favorites again. Georgia, that's how fast it flips. They were kind of dead and buried, looking like uh, terrible in the first half of Alabama. And now they go to Texas and just bully them. There's no other way to say it. I was pretty dialed in on that game. I was watching your guys' game as well, start to finish, but I was heavy on Georgia, Texas watching it. And that defensive line of Georgia was disgusting in that game. 
I mean, just making – and Texas has a good O-line. I do believe that still long-term. They made them look like children in that game. It was it was eye-opening. Gil? Cool. My pookies have been the same pookies for the last three weeks. Um, Army, Navy. Mm-hmm. Undefeated still. Crash course. I looked up today. I think Navy has a tougher schedule than Army. Navy plays Notre Dame this week. Yeah, then Army plays them at some point, too. They both play Notre Dame. Correct. But they both but, can have one loss going into the American Championship. Dookie. Did you, did you guys have any other thoughts, though, on Georgia-Texas, considering like you know how big of a game that was, or did it not change much? Uh, I think that the game Texas got hit in the mouth did not respond very well. They were not ready for the big moment quite yet. I don't think Texas is bad long term. I think they did show some like reason to believe that they're okay. Um, Carson Beck stinks. I feel pretty comfortable saying that he's been very he didn't bad. Play well, but he's been very bad for multiple games. So I still think Georgia has problems. I still think the SEC is very strange. Not sure what I learned other than that there's a lot of parody in college football at this point. Because Alabama hasn't looked good. And Georgia lost to them. They were getting smoked by them at halftime. So I don't know. It's very weird. I mean, I'm not surprised Georgia did that. Kirby Smart looked pressed after the game. Very scary. Uh, I think scary. it's safe to assume Georgia to will. At Georgia, I think I saw that oh. already. Nice win. Yeah, someone just got their hundredth win at some not very good <clears> program. <throat> but if you had told me at the beginning of the year that like the top SEC teams are all going to have like one or two losses, I'd be like, yeah, that seems right. I think it just yeah. looks differently because it was at schedule's Texas. weird. Yeah, <clears throat> that was and, big for college football morale, though. Seeing the top ten top team go down, that was supposed to be above other people, that was huge. That levels the playing field a lot. I think they had a lot of good points. Texas hasn't beat anyone good. Oh, so. It's true. That was like the first real team they played. No offense to. I've from seeing a watching guys. a lot of the highlights. Oklahoma, yeah. I think Georgia I mean, found bad. something in Texas's snap count that Texas needs to change it up. Too many mm-hmm. claps or the same cadence claps or same rhythm because Georgia was just timing it perfectly to their to their blitzes. Stark also with a little panic move of pulling Ewers seemed like a, not only to pull him but then to bring him back in after that too just to give Arch like a drive and a half when he got two drives. And then they're like, no, nope, let's go back to it. That's just a weird thing to do. I would never do that if I was a coach. If you want to make a change, I would probably do it the next week, kind of go down with what I started. Like what Michigan did with Tuttle this week. I feel like that's the that's like the difference between the SEC sometimes and the high level football. They're not yeah, afraid that, to just no. They're make like a change. we are trying to win this game, and if I think I can give a spark, like I'm going. Nick Saban did it. in the national championship game. I think they just played a different level, which I admire. Sometimes they're just like, yeah, if I have a guy that's good, I don't care about your feelings. That's I'm trying to win this football game. Different. I think every coach would have changed at the national championship. I just think it looked more like a panicked move, probably because it didn't work. If it worked, then I'm probably talking. Maybe he's just trying to show his fan base. It doesn't really matter who's playing quarterback right now. We're just getting bullied. <laughs> it's like I could throw anybody out there. And True, because if you don't put Arch Manning in, a lot of the fan base Everyone's able, talking about him right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. You settle him that. for the fire and being like, well, see, no, it's not working for anybody. It's a good point. Brad. Doesn't yeah. get any easier for Texas this week. <clears throat> you know where they go. <laughs> they get Pavia. To Diego. They get to go to Football. Broadway. I mean, we should have all just had Vanderbilt season tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Would have been a time. I don't know about that. I lost at Georgia State. It would be cool for the Alabama. Game. Alabama and Texas at home. Yeah, that is nice. And they're going to win against Texas. And too. Virginia Tech no, I don't at think home. So. That was on Texas the might lay the lumber. I mean, Vanderbilt is good, those but that's a game where like historic, like since like early two thousands nineties. Virginia Tech, Alabama. Vanderbilt's Texas. actually never been good at football ever. Um, so good for them. Big win coming their way this week. Do they get Tennessee at home too? They play LSU as well. I'm not sure. Uh, Dukey, two SEC teams that are probably thinking about their coaching buyouts right now. Auburn and Oklahoma. Really, really ugly. Auburn is like the king of just blowing leads. It's it's actually impressive how they keep blowing leads. They had a quarterback go to the hospital throughout the game, come back and beat them. Never um, and then never Oklahoma just getting destroyed by South Carolina. Venables, I 
might have to go back to DC land, DC land because that is that's not looking great. Oh, did you read the graph today? Come on, did they get beat that bad? No, I don't that's know how you you didn't get beat that bad though with that final score. They had three turnovers on the first three drives. That's not that's a lot. Football. I mean, yeah, it's like thirty-two to three at half. What was I, I going to look at? I had that just... on in the quad box. Up uh, the Kerma field pick. I was going to look at something. Any uh, any others? Hmm. Yeah, I got one. Lincoln Riley and the Trojans, another dookie. Yeah. They yeah. are just three and four. Dookie all over. I remember we had a conversation about when Michigan beat USC. Is oh, is USC bad? Well, I think oh we know God. they're pretty bad now. They got worse. Yeah, they sure did. They are still dookie. believer though. At the time, it's a good win. You beat the team sure. that was at the time. Sure. But that had a little bit of a Notre Dame-Michigan State 2016 stink all over that game. That's that's what that was. Another Evan, fan base. Evan will know the reference. Yeah, you guys say that like probably once every three weeks about how well, it could be a team that's – you thought you are sick and then they're both three and two, nine. Two top ten teams at the time both go three and nine. Yeah, that's – Whoa, that's Notre Dame went four and eight. That was a good win. Yeah. Good for them. We beat them. Lincoln Riley got to be looking at what his buyout is too, because that is getting disgusting up there. I, I was already looking just at um, who was saying it. Who? He looks defeated. He sounds defeated too. He sounds I like was, he doesn't want to be there. I saw some fan base talking about replacing their coach. I thought about him as OC for Michigan as well. I had that thought today. I don't think he's going to fall that far. No, I think he he'll get, get an NFL somewhere. job. Uh, well, I think he's going to be an OC somewhere. No one's going to hire him to be a head coach right away. Uh, well, that he would take. So all think. these coaches still wish Nick Saban was still. That's where he wants to go. Just go be Nick Saban's offensive coordinator and revive your career. That's a good point. Like if if you put yourself in Lincoln Riley's shoes, Lincoln I think Riley I would rather I would rather go to a high profile and be an OC than go to like a uh, Sun Belt school and be a head coach. A hundred percent. I would rather go. I mean, be an I think you go be like a head coach in like the bottom of the Big Ten, bottom of the ACC, bottom. Of he could have a power five head coach. But would you st- would you rather do that than be an OC at one of the top it, schools? Depends on the school, I think. OC at top school. It would depend. Just what school? Chip Kelly. Uh, OC at Georgia sounds good for him, though. Yeah. Is their offense is a... OC at uh, Tennessee. My other pookie for hey, college Hypo was... The same tree. Oh, really? Hypo I got know. fired because the Lincoln Riley was coming up. Oh. So I'm Stoop Street. Did not know that. Um, other college pookie, our team, LSU, one of my four bandwagon teams the rest of the year. So huge game this weekend that I will be heavily yeah, invested LSU in. Yeah, I'll cheer for that game. I'm thinking I'm going to cheer for AM. I was going to say, because your elder Oklahoma pick? Yeah, they're dead. Yeah, I, owned that. <laughs> I owned that two weeks ago. Yeah, they're well, you got ahead of that one, too. So yeah. I, guess that's I owned that a couple weeks worse. ago. They are a poopy, poopy team. I'm all in on LSU, and they found a run game in Arkansas too. So that, that is their scary team right now. I still don't really believe in Nussmeier as a quarterback, but oh, I think I do. Be, more so because the national landscape is not great this year. If you're a bad he NFL team, I don't know who you're down. like. I don't know who you're excited about in this draft. Not to get into draft talk, but I don't Whoa, know who you're like. I, I stand by what I just said. Travis Hunter <laughs> of quarterback. Quarterback position. Cam Ward, special. Maybe a little bit. He's cool. My uh, last uh, Jack college dookie was uh, college refs changing calls based on fans throwing stuff on the field. That's crazy, and there's no place for that in the game. That was that shouldn't be allowed to happen. Did you guys catch any of that, or were you yeah, dialed in the Michigan State it. Iowa? I was, di- I was dialed in. I well, I would go to the quad box on uh, commercials, so I happened to go to quad box right when that happened. Um. And yeah, I was a little stunned by it. I mean, it went on for like 10 minutes. It reminded me of when a couple of years ago, Pulisic and the boys went down to Mexico for a game and a Mexican, Mexico fans just threw shit all over the field after we scored the goal. It was, it looked like a scene out of that. And I was like, oh, this is just bad. We can't have that. And then they, it, it was worse than the Lions playoff game versus the Cowboys. They huddled that long. There was no, they would just just talk to themselves, looked at it on the video board, and came back out and just said, "Yeah, there's no there's no pass interference. It was the right call, right call. But crazy that, how they got how there. they got to it was terrible, bad process. <laughs> and that's what Kirk said. Kirk was not happy about it. No, 
And then McConaughey, classic McConaughey, released a statement today. I read like, that. Th- so funny how he wrote that. Well like done. It exactly how he was like talking. It was no more bullshit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the only thing on that field should be Texas fight, not our cans. <laughs> yeah. I read it in, in his voice, and I was like, this could not be more accurate of how he would write this. I got something I want to say. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I'll rip off my NFL one since I know you guys aren't NFL guys. Whoa, Evan's not, not an NFL guy. I like the NFL. Do Pookies you? of the week in the NFL. Yes. Seattle Seahawks. They looked pretty good. Kenneth Walker. In a game. Kenneth Walker. Amari Cooper. Happy to be in his new home. Already caught a touchdown pass. Good for him. Thanks Pookie. to Keon Coleman telling him the route. Browns fans. They don't have to deal with the QB situation anymore. Pookie. Saquon Barkley, what a what a crazy revenge game he had. 176 something yards on the ground, just dummy the team that wouldn't pay him in the offseason. Evan watched that HBO show. He knows how that conversation went. Good oh, for Saquon. Uh Dukies, Brock Turdy. That was bad. Alex. Oh, they should have beat the Chiefs. Turdy. Chiefs did I've not been play well. A long time that Brock Turdy's dirty. Long time. That that was a bad game for him. He had started really good this year too. But that was Since a bad. Since the bad beginning, game. I've said that guy is not a franchise quarterback. Uh, and then my Dookie of the Year nominee. So this is a big one. Uh, Chris Christie. Just a f- terrible oh, week for Chris Christie. <laughs> oh, got so wow. many likes and uh, probably two hundred fifty thousand views. I haven't looked that recently, but so it was numbers. politics. So hits. many numbers, Grant. Shut up. Um, Politics has a new dynamic to it. A lot of people that don't. Shout out to I was Barstool. That that picture, like when I was in college, was on the rundown. And I remember it was like Dave and Big Cat and KFC just making fun about how absurd of a picture it was. And I remembered in my brain, I was like, there's that really funny picture of him in a baseball uniform. And I was like, I'm just going to put this out there because he's talking shit about our head coach. And boy, did people grab a hold of that. Yeah, they sure did. <laughs> Um, there's some really mean, funny comments on that. So if you guys are ever bored, go do that. The front butt was such a good one. The Humpty Dumpty build. I mean, there was some great, great, Humpty great build. comments. The Humpty build. Dookie that you missed. The Jets. Just an absolute Dookie. J-E-T-S. Franchise. Jets, Jets, Jets. Yeah, the Jets. Um, oh, Justice Hill. Damn. I didn't used to have him. Did Lamar score on that? That was a rushing touchdown. Yeah. Called- I have him holding in this game. That sucks. Holding. He'll get one more. Dookie Jets. Dookie Aaron Rodgers. Dookie firing their head coach in week six. Just dookie, dookie, dookie all around. On Kirby Joseph killed him. He ended his career in Lambeau that night. Little did we know. <laughs> it appears Little so. Did we know. Little did we know. And Mike Trico cried. <laughs> Basically on the air. Yeah, Mike Trico's. Yeah. I just remember that too. That and the asterisk. asterisk. Re- He's from Dookie. Michigan too. What's his Mike deal? Tarico. Dookie Mike Tariko. Pookie, Colin Coward. He's just still the best. Love Colin that guy. Coward? <laughs> Sorry. Chris Collinsworth. Chris <laughs> I've gotten them confused my whole life. They kind of look similar what? too. Chris Collinsworth. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, that's not good, Grant. I've done that my whole life. Just get those two confused. Pookie and Dookie. Dookie, Dolphins, Pookie to us coming back. Maybe they won't be bad forever. And Tyreek Hill, fantasy owners, Drew. And Jalen Waddle, fantasy owners. Maybe. TPD. <laughs> <laughs> to us back. I don't have any others. I'm Dookie and Pookied out. Dookie, the Texans. Out of my system. Were those black uniforms? No. Those were dark blue? Those were the darkest blue I've ever seen. Oh, Evan. Dookie. Dookie whites at home. Packers. Yeah. Packers. They suck. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful day in Lambo, though. They God, should, they should have there. missed that field goal on purpose just because they're wearing white at home. Oh. Um, all right. Speaking of the NFL, let's get into the winners. We'll start. We'll go Lions, then Michigan State, then Michigan, then our preview of the game. Uh, Lions. Saving the best for last. Lions. Well, I think the Lions. Lions are best for me right now. I'm talking about them first. What? A win for the boys in the Honolulu Blue. Gritty road win in a rowdy U.S. Bank Stadium. Very loud. Um, let, let me just take you into how I started this game. Because uh, you can tell this game in like three different stories. The start, our comeback, and then almost the disaster ending. So I was heading back from the gym. Not a big deal. 
uh, at the start of the game. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give Dan Miller some love on the radio. It's a 10-minute drive back. I'm listening to it. The, the call of him, the, the fake punt, was surreal. <laughs> You're just driving, <laughs> and he goes, oh, they faked it. And Lomas Brown was like, oh. <laughs> and then he goes, and they won't get it. And he goes, stopped at the line of scrimmage. I'm like, the line of scrimmage was fourth and eight. We didn't get anything. We went for it. And he goes, it was a, it looked like a speed option with Jalen Reeves Maven as the quarterback to Sione Vaki. I was like, what the f- are we doing yeah it wasn't a good play and then i watched it i was like there's no way it was that bad it was that bad it was it was horrendous and then aaron jones scores two plays later i get home i'm like well we're kind of screwed and then we go three and out ten nothing um i think rightfully so the fan base was was feeling really bad because we talked all week about not letting minnesota that was an over puddle by the fan base i mean it was i think Still the first quarter. I mean, there was a lot of time left. And we are an offense that can score at will, which we found out. So. Over puddle that we're going to get blown out, but not fair puddle that we're probably going to lose. Because we already came off of losing Hutchinson. And then you spot an undefeated team in the north who's had hot starts all year, 10 points. And nothing right now for me. Don't have a first down in the first quarter. And Tim Patrick, <laughs> you, he fumbles what looks like a fumble at the time. I, that was a fair puddle. It was a fair moment in that game where I was like, this is going to be bad. Not me. No puddle. You're built different, Alex. We, we know I that. Know. I know. I am. I was thinking that it was going to get ugly for I a little bit there. Get ugly. I think that's fair. I won't blame any Lions fans. I thought it might get ugly. Because anybody can get gotten in the NFL. And then just a uh, – we don't like to overreact. I like to overreact. Best I mean, second quarter I've ever watched. <laughs> I mean, I don't – I can't so- think of another one. <laughs> So beautiful. Can you think of another second quarter off the top of your head? It's too hard to think. How many like, second, second quarter quarters do you no. just have in your head? Uh, I'll never none. forget that one. I'll never forget that one. <laughs> because I'm talking about it right now. Because that, that was that was a crazy second quarter. Yes, it was. Gibbs touchdown. Play the clock Amara perfectly, touchdown. too. Gibbs touchdown. Oh, my God. Just undressed defenders left and right <laughs> it's disgusting i got undressed after i watched that <laughs> he undressed cam bynum i undressed myself and then yeah. we scored again the next drive it was I, a dream second quarter i think the way i think about this game is i wrote down like the top whatever players that stood out should we just go player by player we'll start with gibbs i think he had what 160 something all-purpose yards over 100 rushing 40 something receiving just the most explode besides Jefferson, right? Jefferson's his own guy, but like in terms of just weapons on a football field, Gibbs is Gibbs is up Special. there. Special. Where do you rank him? I don't know, but he's up there as a weapon on your football team. He's he's insane. He just glides. It's like his feet don't even touch the ground when he's running. No, he runs on his tiptoes and he just flies. He's just he's floating. He it's made remarkable. that juke move and got faster. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> no slowdown like, on like, that kid. It's like he hit a turbo in Mario Kart and he just got faster. Evan, Chris Godwin just dropped a pass, not my wide out. <sighs> just so you know. Yeah. And there, is there, are, there are some of those games that we ran into last year, too, where he's just better suited against some defenses. And it didn't help that Montgomery ends up f- fumbling, too, to really have a stinker of a Probably game. Probably his worst game he's had for the Lions. Certainly up there, when he's, a, especially when he's been fully healthy. Last year he had some injuries and whatnot. But there's some games where it's just like this is a Gibbs game. You can see it. You're like, this is Gibbs. He's just too fast for this physical defense, and they can't stay in front of him. And so that was awesome to see. It was. Very enjoyable. Um, Evan, I'll tee, up, tee you up. The other guy I wrote down, Brian Branch. Tell me a little bit about Brian Branch and what he does to you when you watch him play defense. All pro. All pro secondary. I mean, right now, you it's probably hard to argue that he's probably playing the best. Well, the Packer fans are going to come at me for this. McKinney leads the NFL in interceptions. Yes. Um, I don't watch too much Packers, so I don't know how much McKinney's moving all over the field, but Brian Branch is moving all over the field. McKinney is not doing what Brian Branch is doing. I'm comfortable saying that. Me too, even though I don't really – I don't play or watch 29 on the Packers. <laughs> I mean, he is first team all pro. He's probably he is he's DPLI defensive player of the year. He's plus four thousand five hundred right now. He just got put on the list. Yeah, I like that. Just he's like tenth, he's like tenth on the list. He's at he the, they put the game. Play, it feels like he is playing in high school again. So the league is that. 
<laughs> he did not say that. He, he says it feels like I'm in high school again. Oh, the I mean, that might be the most like disrespectful quote of all time. That's <laughs> what he said. I'm Let's see if I can this. find it. It's kind of crazy guys, that... If, when was the last time we had this dominant of a second? Or like Darius Slay is probably the last one that we had, like a a reliable back half. I know Kirby Joseph a couple years ago, but he wasn't too reliable. He just picked off Aaron Rodgers. Kirby and yeah. Ryan doing, doing he some did. Things Eric this Woodyard year. just finally feel like I'm kind of playing back in high school. He said, and also AG Aaron Glenn is putting me in hella positions to make plays. <laughs> but it's not even like the Do big it. like the 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 picks or anything like that. There's those like small detailed plays that big picture wise you forget about, or, like a simple pass breakup here and there. Okay, the second, two point conversion, one, the two point conversion, or two point conversion, Save the game, won the game. Like those kind situations, of. like at the moment, you're like wow, what a good play, and then you forget about it in like two drives. But like big picture, you have no idea what can domino effect after that. Crazy how bad the first he was in the first game of the year too, and then now he's just. Oh yeah, completely forgot. He was my memory horrible hold that. in the first game. Missed a lot of tackles. New position. Get in the field. Pick, DPI missed tackles. Now, DB expect defensive. Every he's the Lions' defensive player of the year right now. He is the NFL defensive player of the year by Alex's. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna no go bias. TJ Watt still. Well, the go NFL TJ tweeted. A, uh, the video of his pick and said DPOY question mark. TJ Watt only had one tackle last night, and I was, oh, I was very upset. Let's just say that he is the reason I missed out on a good chunk of money, and all I had oh. to, do, all he had to do was get over two and a half tackles. Not sacks, the last, tackles. Last leg what a crazy of the bet, wasn't it? That's a, that's a Fanduel bet. It's just tackle over unders. Well, it was part of the DraftKings same game parlay. I put that in there. I was like, TJ, what well, we get? How many legs were in this parlay? <sighs> enough. How many are we talking? <laughs> enough, enough to party. To, enough to get oh, after oh. it, Alex. Old enough five, to party. Six? Five or six. I think six. And you hit five? Yes. My uh, underrated branch <laughs> play, there was one. They slowed it down and went back. But I remember watching it live. He was playing safety like 12 yards off the ball. And someone filled the hole, and I thought it was like Jack Campbell or Anzalone because it was like I was like that had to be a linebacker because that was like at the line of scrimmage. And they replayed it, and Greg Olson's like, "Look at Brian Branch; he's twelve yards off the ball, and he makes this tackle like a line a yard past the line of scrimmage." I was like, "Oh my god, that's disgusting!" <laughs> like he just flies in out of nowhere; it just hits people right in the face. Yeah, he's a good player, that's for sure. Fun player to say his name to, sitting next to Marissa, BB. watching our two games at the same time. I go, BB. And she's like, are you calling a player baby? And I was like, no, that's yes. BB. That's, yeah. Yes, that's I Brian am. Red. Oh, BB. BB. Yeah, he's he's phenomenal. Um, and it's so good the Packers traded us like that pick to go back and get him. That just makes it even better. Crazy. He fell to the second round. Still not sure why. And showed up the next day at the draft. That's how you knew he was built different. Not sure why he fell. <laughs> Would love to know. All right, next guy, Amin Ra. Uh, we talked about him a lot, obviously, but it's just becomes. I think we're. I just want to remind us that we. I don't want us to take it for granted. It's disgusting how good he is at football. Yeah, he had a big game, but it felt quiet all at the same time. You know? that, that's what I mean. It's like a hundred. We're just getting he, used to him. Just he's just gonna get a hundred yards. He's gonna have eight catches, and he's gonna <laughs> score a touchdown. That's just how it is. We don't even like notice. I think he has to be, I don't know the stats on this, but he has to be the receiver with the most amount of targets that has the highest completion percentage because whenever he's targeted, I feel like he catches it. It just, it's never, that's a testament to Goff too, who we'll get to next in this list, but eight targets to Amon Ra, eight catches, 100%, just throwing the ball, caught, 120 yards. The one that basically iced the game is just a big boy catch getting smacked by Harrison Smith as he's going up to get it. And it's just... His hands are like the strongest. They gotta be like the strongest hands in the league for wide receivers. He just catches every single ball. Well, he hits I, the gym hard. He's not a slot merchant, but Pickens had a good game, so he can't really talk shit about uh, Pickens. But he'd be good. You could line him up anywhere. You could line him up in the backfield. He'll make a play. And he's just that type of guy. Special. He did actually, didn't he? Line up his running back against Seattle his rookie year and scored yeah, touchdown. He took some handoffs. <laughs> that was his fantasy uh, football breakout game when he won people championships. Alex, tee you up for a home run. Jared Goff. You want to talk about Jared Goff? (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't really think about his MVP race until it got brought up in our group chat. Yeah, you don't really think about it. No, no, I can't get then, out of then my you're head. You're like, okay, you look at the scope of the NFL, best team, and your typical player. players that uh, are mm, in the MVP race. Okay, Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, QBs. Yep. Correct. Okay, Burrow's team not very good. Burrow struggled. Josh Allen. Teams good. all right. They're running. They're running the ball a lot. They're running the ball a lot. They're a different Correct. offense and now. Kansas City is run first. They don't even like there really rely on the throw. Bad. Mahomes threw for 150 run. yards against the Niners and had a pick or two. So Correct. yeah, two two picks. Mahomes' best sense. play was he he Ooh. had his longest rush of his career, 34 yards or whatever it was. It was a nice. Then you look at Goff. His last four games, seventy two for ninety something, over a thousand yards. I have one here of his last three. Four is, is good too. Three, four, but the last three, fifty eight for sixty eight, eighty five percent for those doing math <laughs> percentage, eight hundred eighty seven yards, eight touchdowns, zero picks. First quarterback in NFL history to have a QBR over one fifty four games in a row, or three games in a row, four games in a row. Yeah, not sure how to calculate that but don't know really what that means but that's got to be pretty good um yeah he's doing everything right did you see the stat stat of the day uh yes the lions have more touchdowns than he has incompletions in the last four games yeah oh 18 tutties 16 incompletions the ball doesn't hit the ground in this offense we have 18 touchdowns yeah yeah in four games and he's one for one in a reception (laughs) yes does have a receiving touchdown. Uh, yeah, no if ands, or buts. JG is cooking well, right now. Well, good thing now. for us that we got to play Dallas, so. Well, and I mean, it's he's... not just like – it's not – this game is specifically wasn't just the throws that are manufactured by Ben Johnson. This was like complete control of, one, the offensive line, two, the pressures, knowing where his checks are, and still making big throws – with pressure in his face. The one when he was really like unconscious was the Khalif Raymond toe tap one on a corner route that he would yeah, lose before he even stupid. snapped off his route. And there was like a blitz in his face that he checked at the line. I was like, okay, he can, he legitimately can do anything he wants right now because he's out. Or when Grenard comes around and almost strip sacks him, then he still fires a dart. I think to like, doesn't even been. look away. Just still looking down the field. It takes a, the most casual step up ever and then just guns it in there. I'm like, this dude, it's unconscious. Unconscious. It's cool to see because, like, we saw him in his first year and he was Jared Baby Hands Fumble Golf. Like, oh, he just yeah. drops that ball. Not to even remotely think about that, but, like, it's a different player right now. It's it's kind of awesome to see the evolution of him since he's been a lion. He's fully back. I mean, again, getting better every year. He's getting better every year in the league. And against the pressure, that was a big point, Alex. You were finding stats about him under pressure. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. was not happy that people just continue to say he's garbage against the Blitz. Well, he's actually like the best in the league against the Blitz. 13 for 16 or something like that against the Blitz, 130 yards and a touchdown or something. He's just pretty yeah, close. He's out. been great against the Blitz. Uh, the only one better, I think, is Brock Turdy last year, which, whatever. Guy's turd. Um,. <laughs> Yeah, it's good to it's good to hear that we're not going to be listening to any uh, Hendon Hooker talk for a while. Draft pick. Um, looks good on the sideline, though. Yeah, looks he looks ready. He looks ready for action if he yeah. needs to be in there. Um, so I'm very happy, happy uh, that uh, JG is QB1. MVP. I don't want a new quarterback. Some people Ever. still might want a more mobile quarterback. Not me. Give me Jared Goff. No. I'm and he's not there. He's not to this level by any means because this guy is the goat of it. But like he's getting that old veteran Tom Brady shit in the pocket going, where he just like he's evading pressure in a slow old man way because he's so smart at this point in this offense. Like the mind connection he has with Ben Johnson, who's probably made him smarter over the last three years. It's just a new level. You know, he has a coach unlike Sean McVay who wanted to give up on him instead of injecting him with his brain power. They did win a title, so whatever. But Ben Johnson's like, no, JG, I got you. Like, we'll do this together. I'm a genius. You're smart. We'll figure it out. And they're just, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's How many quarterbacks would you take over Jared Goff right now, rest of season? None in the NFC. I thought about this the other day. He's the best quarterback in the NFC right now. Yeah. 
Agreed. I would take Allen. I would take Mahomes. Agreed. Burrow's so good. Does his wrist bother me? Does Burrow's wrist bother me a little bit? I don't know. I would take Mahomes, (laughs) Allen, and Burrow, and I think that's where it ends for me. Maybe Stroud? I don't know. Stroud looked – I mean, I don't know. He's a top five quarterback in the NFL. Jared Goff is right now. Power rankings, whatever you want to call it. I don't think he can. You can argue it, but like – I Sure. There's probably her Justin Herbert stands out there and whatnot, and he's an offense that only runs the ball. So I get it. I get a lot of people would look good with Ben Johnson, but it's a different level now because now Jared Goff is like standing in the face of pressures and his deep ball. I mean, his deep balls have been sweet this year. He's hit JMO multiple times. He hit Amon Ra again with an all out blitz in his face, dropped it over. He also had JMO wide open on the left side, would have been a walk in, but he made, he chose the harder one to Amon Ra and he dropped it over the safety's head. So. He's just he's balling out. He's in com- complete command of the offense. And I just texted my dad at one point. I was like, this is like so fun to watch. This is just a joy. I'm blessed to be alive to watch this offense play football. It's so fun. Remember that, folks, listening at home. What Grant just said about Sunday versus what he said on Saturday. It's not the same sport. <laughs> Saturday versus Sunday. It was it was an out-of-body experience. It's fair. Uh, yeah. Lastly... Shaky start, but the O line we need to again not take them for granted. You got Pene Sewell blocking two players on all out blitzes to give them time to make touchdown passes. It's just they're just so good at what they do. They're gonna have moments. Uh, Awasika, Awashika had a slow start, but then settled in. They're, yeah, it's just everything that we talk about on the skill and the flash of Jameer and Jared and Aminra, you don't get any of that without the offensive line. So shout out to them for being the best in the league as well. Yep, and we didn't sell a single offensive lineman, and the starters played every snap. It's kind of crazy. Just all the fellows out there. Just the boys. Honor Ray Shout no as Zeitler. well. No Zeitler, who's really important. Yeah, that we saw. Um, not I didn't write him in the first tier of players, but you gotta give a shout out to Jake Bates. Huge spot for the kid. Seems like a really nice kid in the post game stuff. I'm a fan of him. I want him to be our kicker for a long time. He hasn't missed this year, so he's got that going for him. Um, just a nails kick, 44 yarders. You see those missed a lot. I was you nervous. Know? People it get was. better. He's not fair, Baron. He's not. He's not fair, Baron. People can miss. He drilled it. I was very nervous, and I thought I was going to go Did right when it wobbled. Freaking think the, the stupid. Uh, what do you want to call it? Announcer jinx was happening. Yeah. They had this whole 10 minute spiel on him. Rightly deserved. Yeah, the light, his life story. Life story. And too nervous. He's I wasn't nine listening. for nine on the year in field goals. Hasn't missed since high school. And he didn't say that, but it was like something back to his high school stats. And I was like, why are we bringing up high school right now? I just want to win. I just want to make this kick. Pri- his only prior kick before the USFL was in high school, and he missed mm. it. He was a brick salesman yep. in Texas. Like Houston. Houston. Yeah, he was your neighbor basically 18 months ago. Well, I wasn't here 18 months ago, but sure. There was a guy, I don't know, he might be his brother, honestly, now that I see what he looks like with his helmet off. A guy at the gym I go to in Rochester came up to me. I was wearing a Lions shirt before the season started. He's like, you a big Lions fan? I was like, yeah. And he was like, I know someone that's on the team. I was like, oh, no shit. He's like, yeah, Jake Bates, that kicker they just saw. I was like, oh, yeah, the guy that played for the Panthers. He's like, yeah, like hope he does well this year. I wonder what that guy's doing now. I don't know. We'll find but, that guy. Yeah, I haven't pod. seen him since. It it's was an interesting brother. interaction. Oh, he wanted to work in sets. That's why he started a conversation. I forgot. Yeah. He- you want Did to do you? it? Yeah, we worked in. I only I cut mine short. I don't love that. It's not my favorite. That sounds hot. <laughs> I cut mine short the other day doing chess with this dude. That yeah. sounds hotter. <laughs> <sighs> he was doing Got- way more weight than me. I'm like, buddy, we're gonna have to take weights off every time if I keep going on this. And he he did like eleven sets. He just kept going. I'm like, oh, dude, dude, I'm working done. out with Jason. Is that what Jason does? <laughs> <laughs> 12 that sets so of chess. <laughs> well, Jason uh, said do, his, his workout routine is chess one day and then biceps oh, next. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would do like five reps and he's like standing over me. He's like, oh, one more. One more. I'm like, buddy, this is like the fourth set. I'm done. Like, I got a rep range, my brother. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, I'm heading. I was like, what? And then I just was, went to a different spot of the gym, just watched him. He did like five more sets. I'm like, that's wow. absurd. <laughs> Just wanted to be a new friend, and you backed away. You cowered away. I've seen him since. He didn't, he didn't say. No. This is where I think we can pivot to um, 
any potential questions or negatives. I have three I wrote down that I penalties. have eyes on. Okay, I did not have that, so that's good. Speak about offensive, penalties, Alex. <laughs> offensive mishaps, false starts, illegal holds, holds. Just there was a lot of gross drive killers that I was not a fan of. I have a question, game. Alex. How about an answer, Evan? Okay. Five minutes left in the game, third and six. Goff gets sacked. He turns around and shucks the ball into the turf. Fumble or not? I know we recovered it, but do you think it would have been a fumble if, let's say, Minnesota recovers it? Do you think it would have been a fumble? Oh, I know that one. He threw it, though. Yeah, but it, well, it was like... It was like eh. But we but technically, like, I think, got the ball from the spot we recovered it. Ragnow fell on it, yeah. I think. They called it a fumble. Right. I know they didn't review it. I thought it was a pass. I don't. I don't know why they didn't. They look did, back I don't at think it. they reviewed it because we recovered. They didn't care. It. Yeah. Yeah. Which right. is not really how sports. So is supposed sorry. To go. What was your question? <laughs> Do you think that would have been a fumble or not? Because uh, that played I mean, pissed they me call, off, and I think it was. If they called it on the field. How bad that went. If they called it on the field, a fumble. Yes, I would assume it would have stayed a fumble. That play pissed me off. But I didn't see a replay, so I don't really know. I still don't get how we came back from break and Blandino was trying to tell us that that branch touchdown was potentially stand. False hope right at the last second. And then they're like, no, nope, not. Fumble. I wrote it off in my head. I went to the kitchen. Same. I'm like, well, that, that was cool. But like, yeah, we didn't deserve it. He was out they of bounds. Did. I still think it was the right call. I just, they came back and tried to make me think they it was happening. They showed that angle like, from like middle of the field. It's like, oh yeah, he's out of bounds. And then you come back and they show him the angle from like the sideline. It's like his heel is above the, <laughs> and you're like, wait, is it actually a touchdown? Yeah, then I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my no. God. I guess I don't fully agree with or understand the feet being out. I would think even if your toe's out, you're out. I don't get the whole heel thing. But I guess it's your whole foot. I don't know. Um, I feel like if your toe's out of bounds, you should be like out of bounds. your heel can hover over the out of bounds, but you're not out. Did you guys yeah, see the uh, NFL's Twitter bio? No. no. If you here? don't like football, you're lying. And it's <laughs> this picture. I can't see it. Oh, I'm in a point for a first down. If you don't like football, you're lying. Does anyone else do that when he does it? I I point sometimes. I yeah. stood up and cheered like a little girl when he caught his long pass. I pretty much pass. Like a little, first like down a point little girl. Time. <laughs> Took the lead back. Evan was on his feet I yelling. Was. Woo! I, I mean, was. I was in a bar with a lot of Lions fans, and I was. My emotions were not in check. <laughs> I was pacing. I was doing the whole bit. Well, we can get this out of the way. My other couple negatives. Fake punt was terrible. It's just a bad football decision. I, yeah. But that's our coach. He said he had the look. I don't know how you misblocked the look. You that do bad. have the look. I don't, they like, the, I don't like the motion. I don't like the motion when they went into it. Okay, but if you look, they did it uh, all 22 from uh, the end zone view. And we outnumbered them on the right. We hmm. instantly did outnumber them as soon as we shifted and went, I sent a guy in motion. Somebody missed a block, idiotic. too. We had a guy miss a block because you see him tra- trailing. And so, like, the pitch, and you're also asking Reeves Maven to pitch the ball. That's the part I keep saying. It's an idiotic on. play. Everything about don't, it. I don't Terrible. know. I don't, I've watched quarterbacks mess up pitch plays a lot. I don't love asking. He is an all, all pro. He is but all I pro don't, special teams guy. He is all pro. If anyone can do it, it's him. I just don't <laughs> know if I love Maven. it. Yeah, it's gross. Um, obvious one, the lack of pass rush is very apparent. Oh, and, Grant, uh, I saw Evan. a stat today. I saw oh, a stat today. The pressure that's the stat. One I was going to read. Oh, we were all going to read it. 15, 15 pressures. Hutch had 15 last week. No, <laughs> yeah. it's even worse than that, Alex. Even worse oh. than that. Okay, oh. so on the plays that we did not blitz or send extra defenders. So Which five. Was, if we, if yeah. we didn't send five. Sure. I don't okay. know what he one said play. definition of blitz or send extra guys. I know because sometimes I wonder if you send four, but one's a blitzing guy and you drop one. Is that a blitz or is that uh, whatever? If you send more than four, we'll count it as okay. five is a blitz. They said it was 27 plays that we didn't send a blitz. 27 okay. snaps. We okay. recorded a pressure on how many do you think? Of 27. We got there once. Three Zero. pressures. Oh, OK. It's Not terrible. a good percentage. Very bad. <laughs> very, very bad. Like two percent. 
We all know the one that was like, holy shit. It was the Aaron Jones across the middle with Rodrigo behind him. Poor guy chasing him across <laughs> the whole field. And Darnold just had all day. And I was like, this isn't sustainable. Darnold had wanna, all day, all day. It's if gross. we want to go where we want to go, we <laughs> we, we got to fix something. That's good, though, that we saw it. Because now In a Brad, win. Will, Brad will have to do something, you know. Yeah, and I think Dan spoke to it today. He he obviously can't say, yeah, we're trading for someone. But he was very, I I think, candid in his press conference today. I saw some quotes from the beat writers being like, yeah, we we looked at it. Um, things are being done. It's kind of how he said it. It's just like, we can't we can't go on like that. Internally, not, we don't have We can survive one more it. week with the dumpster fire that Tennessee is. But after that. I need something before at Green Bay. I'm not losing at Green Bay because we give love all day. Because he will throw picks. He leads the league in picks and he's missed games. We need to heat him up. I need Branch and Kirby to torment him. But if he has all day, it's like. It's going to be Thanksgiving all well. over again. I'm going to start crying. Well, we'll ju- we're just going to blitz every play if we don't have an edge rusher at that point. Yeah, but then sometimes it sucks because your best blitzer is BB, and he's also your best coverage whoa, guy. So it's kind of like <laughs> Jack Campbell's okay at blitzing. We should blitz Arnold. He can't. Well, he but could get rough in the better passer. teams. You, you're leaving your guys. Arnold's one-on-one. been good. Arnold was good, <laughs> except at outside contained. I don't know what he thought he was doing there. <laughs> That's yeah, well, Everybody makes mistakes. So good at his job. It was early in the game. I didn't like Greg. I thought he <laughs> a lot. He also. Oh. Why would a he lot of things qu- that were just completely wrong. And I was like, what is he saying? No. The end of game when he was questioning our time management, he was lost. Well, yeah, he's questioning. Agreed. He thinks we need to be a little more. And then also yeah, he was, he was pissing me off. It's like you don't watch Ben Johnson. <laughs> ben Johnson waits till there's 20 seconds left to call all three of his timeouts. That's just I've accepted that. Ben and Johnson gives me a heart attack every Shabir time. Shamir Gibbs <laughs> takes off. He's like, God, he's like, he's in field goal range. Next well, play, 25 yards. Though. Shut up, Greg. Well, we were going like very now. slow. But we weren't playing for a touchdown. We were just playing for a straight up. There were a couple things that have to go back, and I'm not going to go back. But he said something like, oh, his left foot was out of bounds, and it was his right foot. That just bothered me. And so then after that, everything he was saying, it was like something similar where he would just be completely wrong about something. He messed up some names, too. I forgot who it was, but he messed up some names. Greg, I get it. You got demoted, but do a better job. This is why you're demoted. Damn. Tom Brady might be just as good. I mean, I didn't think Tom Brady was that bad against Dallas. They're no Romos, but they're they're working. Oh, thank God we don't have to listen. Somebody was good yesterday, uh, yesterday against the Chiefs. Oh, uh, good again. That's two weeks ago. He was. He was two weeks ago. This guy's good at everything. Some guys have it better all. Better and better. <laughs> but he just talks like about how, like he would treat the game as like a quarterback and like the game management. Just... He said we're the favorites in the NFC. So also, whoever does the makeup and hair for Fox just did my boy Greg so bad. <laughs> what? His hair was like all like. Okay. Uh, parts sticking out as soon as he gets on TV. It wasn't all combed back and nice. So it's just like they f- up. They set him up. For sure. That's mean. Um, my last thing, I just not a sorry bad thing. A little bad. I'd like to use him more. I just wrote no JMO question mark. I mean, he did nothing in this game. He wasn't yeah, even. I had people at work today yelling at me about JMO on their fantasy team. Which oh, I don't care I about that. Was not nice about it. I was like, you know what? Listen, when Girl you men have don't care about other men's fantasy teams, right? Well, one of them was a girl, but oh. either way. Oh, then maybe Girl adults. <laughs> um, but I said, when you have Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Sam Laporta, and a really good offensive line, it's it's hard to always find uh, targets for everyone. You know, especially when you're winning, you don't need to just dial up the JMO seventy yard touchdown play every time. Would it be nice? Sure. We'd all like that. But they're like, why can't Jamo get 10 targets a game? I'm like, you want Jamo to get 10 targets a game? Send him to the Saints. Send him somewhere else because that won't happen in this offense. It barely happens for anybody in this offense unless your name is Amon Ross St. Brown. Sam Laporta gets like two targets a game right now. Yeah, I know. He's also not been used much at all. And he's like arguably like one of the best tight ends in football. Tim Patrick's our tight end, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Patrick is getting three Dog. targets a game. Yeah, he's good. The thing with JMO, and again, I don't need it every game, but when I was watching Gibbs, again, against a tough defense, it's a little bit slower and older. I was like, this is the type of defense that JMO can really be a chess piece against. If you just get him on a crosser, he's going to outrun Harrison Smith in the back end. So I just was like, I would have liked something a little bit more, but we won. It's fine. I just I was like, in that game, what, I was like, yeah. Half of what JMO does is he just runs deep to get all the crossers open for everyone else. That's like half of his job. 
I don't know. I watch all twenty two. <laughs> half of the reason Amra is open on crossers all the time is because J Lo is just sprinting down the middle of the field and three guys run with him because they're panicking. That's half our offense. And so then he J-Mo, goes home and eats that gravy with flaming hot Cheetos. J-Mo, himself. The best part about JMO is he's not a he's not a me guy. He just loves football. Yeah, like he just always looks like he's having fun. He loves always. blocking too. Yeah, he he's, does. He was the lead blocker on that uh, Gibbs run. Sprinted yeah. up at the end for Gibbs. The guy just yeah. loves football. I also love how Gibbs like shifts it into like coast mode at the five. Like he's just oh, so, so aware good. of like where he is on the football field. He did that against the 49ers too in the title game. He just when he knows he's in, he's just like chilling. He's like, yeah, there's like nobody around me. I'm good. And I was mentioning all the weapons. Khalif also had two catches and a touchdown. So everyone was eating except James. When did Khalif score? Khalif, third what? quarter. He had the little J- the- uh, Gibbs block. Yeah, third free. quarter. Oh, I thought they were going to do us dirty on that. I was Blocking worried he was going to hit him too. Yeah, I was worried he was going to hit him too. Hard. Or a blind side. I thought yeah. he did a good job at Gibbs. Just, yeah. And then uh, Leaf hit his dance. Gibbs loved that. That was quite the dance. Leaf Raymond quite might be the, the most talented and underrated f- fifth wide, wide receiver on five team. on any NFL team. Or four, I guess. Yeah. I like those comparisons where people say, like, he's the blank of this. He's like the... He's the Tyreek Hill of who's a scrap, like a Percy Harvin. He's like the best a Percy Harvin could be. He's Maybe good. that's he's not a great comparison. He's, he's like that short gadget guy. He's a valuable guy to have on your team. He's very valuable. I mean, he could basically be Zay Flowers for a team. But like, I feel confident. But he's I don't think but, like, he's I feel good, confident but... when he's out there. <laughs> yeah, like I trust him to – Catch the ball when it like comes. He, to he caught that catch, one. The he catch was he made of, on third down was really nice. But he was no the one he caught that he was out of bounds on by oh, an inch yeah. was insane grab too. He caught it. He just was rare missed out. throw by Jared. Yeah. If that was JMO, he probably has five yards of separation and it's he in had stride. To, he had to but step up a little bit and sail it towards the sideline. The field. I love I think, this football team. I think that, that was pretty much so it. Happy. Again, talking about the losers, the Vikings are legit. They proved they can hang. Although. No, they are. They're, they're, their defense is scrappy. I mean, that, that Metellus punch was legit. Montgomery does not fumble. I was. I don't know about you guys. I was stunned. I, I think everyone was. He does not fumble. And that was a clean-ass punch. They're opportunistic. You they make plays. I was getting back from grabbing a drink from the fridge, and all of a sudden I just oh. hear mayhem on the TV. Disaster. Like, what is going on? i to think about it like this. The likelihood of that happening to Montgomery again this year is probably pretty low. Yeah, um, one more fumble, maybe. Even if he fumbles, the likelihood of it being cribbed to the cribbed. house for the lead in the fourth quarter, basically okay. zero. So most of the time, that's not going to happen. And then also, we had a touchdown. That didn't count. Probably the right call. You flip those two plays, and this game isn't close. It's not even a close football game. I mean, it was 21-10. to 10. We were rolling. Our defense like, played we really could, well. We could have blown them out. I think we're a lot better than them. Our defense played really well. I mean, you you picture yeah. it. Their first drive that we gave up seven points, they scored on two plays. Okay, we gave the ball on our own end, so there's seven. And then the other seven came from uh, a defensive touchdown. So the defense really didn't never gave it up. Yeah, I thought the defense played well. They had a pick on Sam Darnold. Minnesota couldn't run the ball at all besides the first play they ran. Uh I want to see the all twenty-two of the branch. Jefferson pick. pushed off on his touchdown. Um, They're never going to call that the NFL. No. Yeah, he's so he's so good too. He, honestly, he deserved it. We had him well Kept on him the pretty much Robinson. in check, though. He deserved. Yeah, it correct. wasn't bad coverage. It wasn't. No, bad I'm not coverage. saying that. I mean, you just throwing a ball to Justin Jefferson one-on-one coverage. Fun fact: like, those two played against each other in high school. One on one. Wow, happen. that is fun in Louisiana. Yeah, there was and, a little bit. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, Meek tweeted after the game that uh, he lost the, today's battle, but he'll get it next time. I win the war. So nice. Meek's, Meek's ready for rematch on Jettis. Um, I definitely thought this last week, but I thought it again even this week to a lesser extent. There's a there's a little dynamic here where Ben Johnson is doing to defensive coordinators um, a little Ryan Day to Don Brown type shit the last two weeks. He made Mike Zimmer look like he should retire. Oh, God. And, Mike Zimmer was a bad hire to begin with. They don't have what they want. Right. But this week, too, like you hear about all these exotic blitzes and like just taking what they give you. Like, again, the one that was 
where we scored before the half where they have seven guys standing up like it's some crazy scheme and they're like okay we'll just run a gap up your ass and score a touchdown 12 That's yards awesome. out before the half i was like this is ryan day just stuffing don brown's little blitzing schemes in his back pocket like Brian it's cool to be on the other have, side of it. Brian Forrest should have retired and demanded a new NFL head coaching job after the first quarter. Yeah. Uh, also, though, Ben Johnson always looks pissed. On the I sideline. love his. I love his facial expressions. And he is always <laughs> mad. We'll get like a nine yard gain, and he's like <laughs> Gibbs to himself after a nine yard gain that it wasn't twenty five. I'm like, dude, take a breath. My favorite thing is like he already has a plan, so he's just standing there with his arms crossed, just like pissed off. He's, He's just like, oh, he's you guys. Like, you look at all the other coaches calling plays. Our freaking fast food menu already just like this until like the last possible second. He's just. He's already just leaning back like, you stupid idiots. You idiots. You messed up the play again. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He always looks mad. He's oh, a crazy person. Stuff. I would not want he's to be a- like his son in his household. Son probably takes a wrong, like uh, eats his food too fast and bends at the table. Just no. <laughs> bad. For sure, God, the type of guy that disgust makes his, me. makes his kids and wife like clean the bottom of their shoes when they walk in the house. For sure, for sure. <laughs> or like wear booties. Upstairs. They probably have to like take their shoes off and then tie them and then put them down. And then he's just <laughs> that psychopathic about everything. Yeah, I love it. I hope he never leaves. <laughs> probably won't. I don't even uh, think he will. Um, Dallas. Uh, well, what if he went to Dallas? Spend- no, that would suck. We're not going to spend too much time on the Titans game. They're favored by 10 and a half, I think. They're going to kill I mean, them. We better kill Alex, them. you're the king of, though, no bye weeks in the NFL. I mean, it's uh, an NFL team. Their cool. defense is scrappy. I'm going to say that now. We might score less than we think, but I just the Bills our defense. The Bills scored 30. Yeah. They won 34 to 10 or something. Mason Rudolph might be tougher than Will Levis, honestly, though. Oh, Jesus. They're Will Levis would give garbage. us Will Levis would give us three interceptions for sure. He would. Hopkins is hurt. Yeah. Just They're stop not. the run. You should be fine. Clamp the run down. There should be don't no let Tony Pollard get hot. This game. Let Tony no, Pollard there should not. I don't want a let down spot, though. Yeah, 34 to 10, the Bills beat them. 34 17. Final score. That's what 30? you're saying for this? Yeah. Tony Pollard, I'm two gonna, touchdowns. I'm going to go. No, Evan, stop it. Not against my <laughs> fantasy team. <laughs> the only reason why I'm a, saying it. I feel like this could be an under spot. I'm going to go 23 to 10. Oh. Stinky game. Yeah, I think it could be a little stink. Oh, offense might not look as hot as the last two weeks. Oh. I just think our defense steps up. Like, what do you think? Montgomery is going to rush for like five hundred after his bad game. He's going to be pissed <laughs> off. I would five hundred. I would get away from that guy if he's running towards me next week. I wouldn't. I would not play David Montgomery this week. What did? Uh, why? Oh, I mean, yeah. I guess if he's a little hurt, I need to find it game that i can tell you holy is this f- the score for heaven what the lions beat the jags at home 40 to 14 to two grant you didn't even score the f- lowest or the second lowest amount of points this week nice in fantasy good for the tiebreaker at the end of the year 40 oh to 10 god i think we're gonna move got- 40 to 10 40 to 10 wow and then Hooker run at the end of the game. Do you, that would be good because we got a big game the next. Have you watched our team the last right. few weeks, Grant? Yeah. T- Titans would lose to the Cowboys. Yes, well, right. I lose to the Browns. Now. now I feel like we've role reversed, and now it's like two. Like last year when I would tell you we would dog walk people. This we're is a spot though. We're gonna dog walk the Titans. I I really do hope we do. I think we're gonna win no matter what. I'm just saying if they cover, I would not be surprised. I would. We're legit. We're the best team in the league. Ben Johnson's already scheming for Green Bay. Uh, like, he's that far ahead. He's getting ready for that game. No, he's going to go back he, yeah, into the trick he, play bag. And he's on for game, that game two Green Bay right that now. Green Bay game at Green Bay? That's at <laughs> Green Bay. He's on, the second, Bay yeah. he's on the second Green Bay game so right now. He's on game until playing. Thanksgiving after the Titans. Yeah, really only one... dog walk the Titans. Dog I hope so. Walk. I hope so. You have to. It's the last free um, one we have for a while. All right, the other winner in the state, Michigan State, switching to college football. Go great. Was it 32 to 20, correct? Yeah. Final? Dog Vegas walking. Did not, did not have this game pegged. I Dog did. Score was, I told you at the beginning of the year. Evan, yeah, go ahead. This was your statement game. You, you, <laughs> you didn't think you it was from the offseason. That. 
I did not think it would be that offensive performance, almost 500 yards of offense. Wow. I guess Dog Phil Parker. Walks. Phil Parker, Michigan State grad. Michigan State dominated Iowa in every Phil facet of the game. They really yeah, did. They did. It's Score true. was closer than the actual on field product. Correct. Yeah. Oh, I mean, just, How's I just, it feel, guys? I just, How's it feel? <laughs> something we haven't felt in a couple years. Something I haven't years. said in the chat that, but Michigan State, we <laughs> the bye week. Whoa whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. We won the bye week. Yeah, we sure did. The other team that we're going to talk about did not win the bye week. Whoa. Yeah, let's just not this about, is about Michigan State. Correct. Right now. Not about them. Take your laps. <laughs> but did we just did some things that we've been asking for the and last I can't see your four face. weeks. One, I asked for a little bit more zone read on oh. offense. Got it. Less turnovers. One bad turnover. Okay, got, got it. But I think they punted that drive or only got a field goal out of it. Missed a field goal. Missed a long field goal. Boom. Got it. Better field position, actually. You could argue, Charles, <laughs> made the right decision throwing that pick. Um, you take away – okay, so the first quarter, he was four for nine with an interception. Second, third, and fourth quarter, 18 for 21. Some NFL throws in there. NFL throws. To the sideline. Responding 18 back for 21. The ball to the sideline is – it's pretty damn Impressive. good. You were I mean, tuned in. You were tuned in to Georgia, Texas. And that's he okay. grew up a little bit in front of us for the bye week. Was it the perfectly timed bye week? I don't know, but it was much needed. I said he was growing up in the Ohio State and Oregon games. People did not believe me. I said that too. Then he would have one bad interception. I said, well, I want to see improvement. And I was like, he better play his best football against our biggest rival, which is this week. And we, I think we have a very good determined. chance to see that from him. Yeah, it would be interesting to see if he continues to build. Well, as as I mean. not he ran to the, the most. point of reliability yet. He but. ran the most out of all the of all the games. Basically, almost all the games combined, he ran the most. 11 rush attempts, 51 yards. And that includes sack numbers? That includes sack yes. numbers in college football. Yeah, sacks are included. He know had he two sacked. big sacks that lost a bunch of yards on. He had a ridiculous run on third down. Ridiculous. Oh, my God. He looked like Lamar Jackson. Is gross. Just it was, it was nasty. The ability he can bring with his legs is gross. Not to mention his arm talent, ridiculous. And it's, that we, ha- you could argue, we have a top five wide receiver in the Big Ten already as a freshman. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's really a game good. The talent, he's but a game you just see like what Alex and I were saying at the beginning of the year: the ability to have competent offensive coaches calling plays is a night. Well, I love our night day difference. Three we're or four crossers. times we just ran, we were under center and RPO. Hey, we're gonna throw the bubble. The corner's playing fifteen yards off. And those oh, there's a are Child's checks also. Like Child's is doing a lot of checking he at the line. Checked at the line and... the most out of all time, and I had one of the most awkward old people sit right. Oh, he wasn't sitting right next to me. He was sitting right next to Tyler, who I was with, and he, that guy was complaining every single time. Child's like audibled. Why? Just play football. Just run the play. Oh, what the f- okay. that guy doesn't. So that guy just has no idea about how he was the, one of the most awkward grown men I've ever witnessed in my life. <laughs> he checked like in, Connors at the uh, Chili's. Like if you picture like picture your grandfather trying to dance to like hit music and do weird things with his arms. That's what this guy was doing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Childs checked into the Foster touchdown, and then he also checked into the Nick Marsh almost touchdown uh, yard short. Um, so that's just two plays where, you know, the game is slowing down for him. He's reading defenses. He's making the right reads. The impact that I had being already in Jonathan Smith's offense for a year prior. We talked about that in the off season. It's not the same level of jump for the kid because he, no. it's not like a freshman because he was in it. The center being in the same offense for four years prior to that. Do you know our center didn't play center last year? Like guard. Yeah. Is Ch- Charles a redshirt freshman or is he a sophomore? He played oh, a lot last true, year, right? True sophomore. He's a true sophomore. Yeah, played every game. The most impressive, I think, stat, uh, for what I thought, but I was confirming here looking in the box score, is that every single time Iowa scored, you guys answered with points, which I think is probably the <laughs> biggest answer, especially in the second half of a team that's maturing and is resilient. Um that reminds me of good Michigan teams I've watched, where it's like you get kind of down because you left a touchdown, but the, the other side of the ball goes and picks you up. Iowa scores to start the half. 
you guys score a touchdown. Answer with a they beautiful answer with another drive. touch. They do another touchdown. You guys have a field goal. Then they score a touchdown to make it 25 20. Boom. Nine plays, 75 yards, five minutes touchdown to seal the game. It's just, oh. it was really, really impressive. Wait, there's a kid back in the interception. Yeah, there was a, there was a pick. He's uh, a loser. Evan, big- to the offensive coordinator point, uh, Michigan State on first down averaged like 12 yards a play. Oh, so, I mean, just absolutely in our Duffy on first down. Uh, we ran the ball well. That, I think, is the most important thing that I saw from this game. The Lynch offensive Adams line ran got the ball a, well. a lot of push. Nate Carter had some okay runs. He averaged four a carry, but Lynch, it, there is a difference, Alex, when you're watching Lynch Adams and Nathan Carter. Oh, yeah, he's way better. He's way better. I mean, it's no the doubt. line play overall, even like I know the offensive scheme, again, gives Child some time with the – play action they do but like just pretty clean pockets overall and then when there was some All pressure year, really. he made play still so except for Oregon Oregon game he was run like a, a yeah, madman the okay, is pre, the most expensive in the country pre kickoff Alex yeah I'm drinking I'm at the tailgate yes good friend of the podcast Dave asked me so what, what, what are you expecting from the game I was like Dave I'll be honest if we kick a field goal every single drive I'll be happy with having 15 points at halftime <laughs> Quote, Heaven. word for word, is what I said. Pretty- He's like, so what's the score at halftime? I was like, I don't care. We have 12, 15 points. So was like, he asked me, you would take 14, 12? I said, absolutely. Halftime rolls around. I get a text message from Dave. Your prediction <laughs> is correct. And I said, I'm never happier. Could you um, kick a field goal? I would have liked one kid. touchdown in the first half. Correct. I, I 100% agree. I would want more touchdowns. But you look at the maturity. previous weeks – Piss on our leg, we turn the ball over. If you're yeah. kicking a field goal, you're, you're better chance to get more points. Uh, and at Correct. that point, all I wanted, all I wanted was points because we were looking at previous weeks of 19 points in a downpour. Okay, but still, you only scored 19 points. Uh, you had seven against Ohio State and 10 against Oregon. Well, I mean, Todd Blackledge was saying it all game long that the message this week to Childs was that every drive needs to end in a kick. Whether it would be a field mm. goal, extra point, or a punt. <sighs> Every that. simple. He simplified However, it. However, yeah. Alex, seven of eight. Did not punt that game. Yes. No nope. punter. But uh, seven of eight drives ended with a kick. Other side of the ball, real quick. Uh, tweet from Justin Thien in the first half. Compiled it well. Michigan State's defense with its best first half since 2019. 58 total yards and zero points allowed. Oh, I didn't know it was that good. That is it was good. It was three and out every drive. Not unbelievable, but because it's Iowa, but like pretty, pretty elite. It elite as it can get in a first half. Of football. So somebody I mean, if you're playing that, a power five that's, opponent, that's impressive. Somebody said that stat. Okay, second leading rusher in the country is coming into your house after you just gave up everything you wanted to Oregon on the ground. Yes, and you everything. take away the on seventy-five purpose. yard touchdown run. Okay, credit to him. Great player, fast. It was bound to happen. He the was one averaging. Gap we missed. He was averaging so less fast. than two he's yards. Lightning. He carry. looked slow too, but he's fast. He didn't look like he was running that fast. Yeah, that was a seventy-five yarder confirmed. Yeah. It, damn near it. 12, he had twelve so, for twenty-one without the seventy-five so, or something like that. Okay, yeah, like less than two yards, a pop. Yeah, yeah. terrible without that. He terrible. that Iowa whatever his name is. He ran right at my face. He was running just straight at me. It's like, oh my god, this is the dagger that's going to start it all. We're talking about a world if Ashton Genty or Genty isn't in college football, this is the best running back in college football. Yeah. So, impressive. Uh, but to that point of the defense, what stood out to me, just eye test, no stats, felt like awesome tackling from your defensive backs. I remember a Martinez tackle, an Ed Woods tackle. People were just filling holes and also great work by linebackers, including Jordan Turner. They just felt like they were playing the gritty, like the grittiest D'Antonio years when people are like um, the Simmons who went to Pioneer. Like it reminded me of that. Like they're just in the right spot. They're reading the pulling guards and whatnot, and they're blowing plays up. So just great tackling, great fundamental tackling by people in the second level. Stack the box, put your uh, corners on a little bit of islands, a little bit more than the typical previous games. And uh, I would say – Huh? It was full. Dare, <laughs> Dare Reese Vanderstein no, to beat you. <laughs> I mean, Evan, the safeties were coming up like five yards off the ball. There was no one back there. 
Yeah, but there was at times situations where we're running our two man shell defense. Sure, third, still... third down. Fine, Correct. First and second down, we were sending the house every time. Looked just great. daring Cade to do something. And he couldn't. Spoiler. <laughs> stinks. <laughs> stinks. And uh, the breaking news the quarterback play this week might not be any better. So. I know. It sucks. I can't really talk shit about Cade because my quarterback's worse. Yeah. Yeah, Cade would probably be the starter at Michigan if he was there, right? Yeah. So. Um, Jonathan anything Cam, else from shout that? Out. Shout oh, out yeah. Cam. Yeah. We kind of mentioned it, but yeah. I mean, that. I saw from Graham Couch. He's like, Jonathan Kim has the chance to be the best kicker in Michigan State history. Evan? Most points scored by a kicker, maybe? Dots? Swenson if, kicked for four years. Conroy kicked if, for three. Geiger kicked if for our three. Team, he's better than those guys, though. He's Tanner better than was. Geiger. He's better than Conroy. Conroy and Geiger couldn't make past a 42-yard field goal. Conroy oh. could. Conroy Barely. made a 50-yard field goal in Fort Field. I was there. Hmm. No, don't. Sure. <laughs> Brett Swenson was good, but I was a kid, That's so I don't remember if he was actually that good. I think Brett Swenson was good. is the all-time scoring leader. He is. Martin I Anderson mean, kicked for Michigan State, guys. I'm just saying. All-time leg, NFL scoring leader. Raw leg talent, Evan. This dude can boot. He missed a Figures field goal. Let's not forget this, guys. He also made a 50, what, 5? 54. This is ridiculous Figures in college are... football. Kickers are heavy, heavily viewed by based on like how good the team is because you need those pressure kicks that if you remember. If he was on a so really good team, he would be yeah. up there. Unless you're Jason Hansen because he was on terrible teams, but he's just so money and the only bright spot. So <laughs> you remember him fondly. That's fair. Um, Having the ability to make a 50-yard field goal, Evan, is something we haven't had in a long time. It's awesome. Ever, really, in our life. We've never had a reliable 50-yard plus kicker. Only uh, – Maybe area of improvement for the defense is a couple sacks. They got they got zero, so maybe just try to work on that. But I don't really have anything they else. They didn't really throw. Didn't need to sack. No need to sack the quarterback. It was hard to get sacks when they're just running the ball, like first and second down, and then third down, you're just kind of chilling. you just knowing that they're not going to do anything. No. I don't know. Um, I thought the team played great. I thought the offense played great. I thought the team played great. Great win. Well coached team. Let's Let's go to the other side. Not well coached team. Wrote down some adjectives. Embarrassing. Well, do you want me disgusting. to read their texts? Yeah, let's read those. Oh, yeah, you can pull those out now. Is this from a caller, Alex? Uh, I'll set the stage when it's from Grant's wife. Oh, uh, let me set the stage when what this was. Uh, I looked back at the box score. So 20 p.m. Central time, 620 Eastern. Again, I told you guys before, I said, if this is the loss, this will be the breaking point. This will be like the point oh, of where it they sure become. Oh, sure. Reach that. Let, let me read it, the, Grant. No, let me. I just want to preface what was said before that got sent. It, we were down 21-7. Michigan was down 21-7. Uh, Illinois punted. Shout out to the defense for having to be on the field the entire game. Punted. Samaj Morgan. Standing there, probably 15 yards of room on a punt return late in the fourth. Fair catches it. Oh, just you can't fair catch in that moment. You have nothing going. Like just sack up and try to get something for the team. And Marissa, yeah, I mean Alex, you can take it from there. Well, she started with, "I'd almost rather have Michigan win another national championship <laughs> than have to listen to Grant during their bad games." That's the first thing she said. <laughs> That's a lie. She would not want that. That's, that's actually a lot. I would not want and that. And then... Grant, I'll quote, listen to you during your bad games. So I'll do it for correct. you. Quote, just said he won't watch another game. End quote. Quote, this is rock bottom. I don't care about this team after today. There will be no more Michigan football talk from now on. Grant has Grant, we done. actually have to talk Michigan football. You lied. Correct. We, talking, we talked Michigan football on Sunday. Uh, I also she sent that and I kind of add a couple caveats. This is my mindset after that game just for that. And then we'll get into the actual game. There will be no besides next week. We had already planned to host people at our house for next week. So that not next week doesn't count. But like Oregon CBS, I'm not planning. I'm not letting games determine anything I do on the weekends. But you're watching if something. If it's well, on yes. and I'm not doing anything, it'll be laptop. But if there's a big 330 game. Like, for example, if if Oregon, Michigan was the same time as Penn State, Ohio State, I'm watching Penn State, Ohio State instead. I do not care about this team. And then I told her, 
The only way this changes is if Jaden Davis starts. I want to see the freshman play. That's not, and I think not. that's fair. But I'm just making my point. He's that's not. where I'm currently he's at. He's not with playing. Me. Alex, you're missing the point. He's not playing, Grant. He's never going he, to. He's transferring. I, I'm not arguing with you. To I'm just Ohio. saying if, he's a Mac level QB. I'm just Oops. saying if he were to get in the game, that's the only thing that could make me actually want to watch and see what happens. I know. Well, I I'll I'll watch highlights for the show after. I'll watch recaps, whatever, so I can at least say something. But I really don't have any care to talk about them. They're disgusting, embarrassing. They got worse over the bye. Yeah. You guys have any questions to steer the, the direction? I have other notes, but we sure can say those do. as we go. How does it feel that last week or two weeks ago, I mentioned, Alex mentioned, that maybe Jack Tuttle just stinks and blah, blah, blah. I, I had a whole big spiel about it. You questioned me. Would you like to admit that Alex was correct and that Jack Tuttle stinks? Getting my victory laps yeah. in before we play Michigan, just in case. You were right. He, he got worse. He did not get better. Thank you. Uh, second question. Before you do that, though, you can see as a fan with hope for your team sure. why you would try to convince yourself. He, look, he looked to but I give you defense, valid he looked, points. he looked better in the Washington game than the Illinois game. So he did regress over the bye week. So that is something that I did. Yeah, I wrongly predicted he'd get better. He got worse. Second question. If Michigan just ran the ball every single play and Alex Orgy played against Illinois, do you win that football game? Against Illinois? No, probably not. We probably still lose. Closer, though, because turnovers. Okay. Be closer. That's, I think that's their best option to win. Sorry. Next question. Next question. Offensive coordinator who, what's his name? Campbell? Kirk? Kirk, Kirk Campbell. Campbell. Who had one year as an offensive coordinator in the Division One level at Old Dominion and then was fired. That is his only experience as OC. Then lashed on to J.J. McCarthy's heels. Now mm -hmm. offensive coordinator at Michigan. Highly, highly underqualified based on those statistics. Is he fired before season's end? Bye. Before season's you're fired. end. If you're Strom Moore, you have to fire him just he, to save your ass. Is Jay Johnson for you? That's guys. a good, that's a good question. He is a interesting case. I yes, I I would like a new one. So let me start there. I would like a new offensive coordinator. Well, uh, based on the resume I gave, yes, you but, should roll. But any rational person, I think, can watch their team and watch who's behind center and realize if Ben Johnson was calling this offense, you need someone to complete the throw. They but we would. don't have. Now, look, they beat Illinois I would, with Ben Johnson. I feel good about that. No, they don't. I'm sorry. They have no one that can throw a pass. He had the Colson Love and wide open in the first half on the easiest corner route of all time, and he sailed it in the, out of bounds. They, they can't. If you draw something up like the perfect play, he either won't throw it. They also had a wheel route for a touchdown. He just was too scared to throw into the sack. and go up the sideline. Yes. Didn't throw it. It's why it's just I don't. I, I, it, I knew it was a replay. I was like, "Oh, chuck the ball, buddy." He does. Yeah, he, he, he got sacked, Alex. I, I don't know what just, to tell you. He panicked. I didn't see it. It was so he open. It was so. They open. had Illinois had like five sacks, and like three and a half of them were just solely because Tuttle was scared to throw to an open receiver. Um, it's 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 hard to judge the coaching staff, which is what I'm struggling with the most because of the that position is so bad. Kirk is Campbell's this going. Michigan got too yeah. cute at times during the game? Too I, cute. Uh, yeah. The reason I would take Kirk Campbell gone is because I think you're coaching for your job at this point, especially with how bad and all the pressure. You need to play with what you have, not with what you want to be. They come out and CBS is saying, oh, they want to be more balanced. <laughs> we can't be balanced. You can't balanced do team. it. You can't. No, you can't. Good, ben, Johnson would, ben Johnson would invent a triple option offense that works with Alex Orgy and maybe win the game. Like, yes. That's what a good See, OC would do. I told you they would win those games with Ben Dan Johnson. Dan Campbell would come out what he did against Pittsburgh his first year and call it 45 run times. Plays. Yes. And guess what? The drive they scored, they just ran it eight times with Khalil Mullins. And they ran like five-yard pass plays to Loveland. So there's a blueprint there. They just, again, are trying to be too balanced, which is terrible. That's why I would go back to Orgy because at least it forces you never to throw. Next question. Yeah. Um. Is this the worst Michigan offense you have ever seen in your life? Uh, well, the stat was they haven't scored this least this less amount of points. I didn't say that well at all. Yeah, this is the least amount of points saying. they've scored since 2014 when they lost to Notre Dame 31 nothing at the end of the Hoke era. So I guess I've seen worse, but 
Notre Dame's better than Illinois probably that year. I don't remember. That might have been the title team. It was the title I team. Don't know. No, it wasn't. Either way, I just meant this season's offense in general. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, yes, it's so they're like 115th out of 134 in like every major offensive stat. Yes, they are. They're worse. I looked it up today. Army, no, our yes, Army has a better leading wide receiver than we do. It's the worst I've ever seen. Next question. Yeah. Um. So you won the national championship. You didn't. What well, Michigan won the yes. national championship? Michigan last did. Year. Yeah. I went to the Rose Bowl. It was awesome. I'm yeah. so glad I did. I imagine if I didn't go. Oh my god. I- so Michigan won the national championship last year. This year we're all seeing what we're seeing. With the national championship in mind. Is this season unacceptable, or do they get a slight pass for what happened last year? No, this is unacceptable. Unacceptable. Wow. It wasn't that was an unacceptable that. loss. That was an unacceptable loss. Because we've talked about on this podcast many times the whole sell your soul for 10 years of suck for one national championship. Not that we're going to trend towards 10 years of suck. I think that would, I don't think that's going to happen. But. At least two years. It is interesting to see because obviously my team's never won. <laughs> that was a that was funny. That was funny by Evan. Sorry, <laughs> did a little at least two years. That was good. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but it is interesting to see because my team's have never won a national championship. Feel free to take a shot. It's hate week, whatever. Um, I don't feel in a position to talk shit right now. Oh, and it's it from the outside from watching you guys react and how the season has gone. It feels like the high of the national championship compared to this low right now has almost completely like washed it out, which I know is not true because you can still go back and watch YouTube videos, but it is crazy how far you can fall in an instant. I mean, what, like 10 months same, ago, 10 months ago, calendar. you're winning the national championship. This. After the game, it's the same calendar year. It's still 2024. And you haven't gone to 2025 yet. And now it's like, this time complete, last year, you're beating Michigan 49 nothing. Michigan State 49 nothing. Complete combustible program destroyed. Everything's in flames. Probably not actually that bad, but that's how it feels. So I was just curious the unacceptableness or not, or if you get a pass. But it's like, wow, what a change. Like how fast things can flip is remarkable. Yeah, I think I can expand, at least for me, again, we're, this is all new territory. None of our teams have ever won a title, so I'm still figuring it out. I would still like, knowing how bad it is right now, still do the 10-year deal. Like, I'll do that. Again, I, I value a title that much. I think it was that awesome. But, like, the whole – anyone you see on Twitter or whatever trying to play the card that uh, I don't care – or any Michigan fan that talks to you, like, oh, I don't care, like, they want a title, that's bullshit. Like, I'm – most of the fan base is really angry. Cool. I, like, no, I think, at, like, they're more numb to it, maybe. He said like, not- we're natty champs. See you next year or something like that. I mean, in the chat. I don't know the exact wordage on it. Yeah. I, but like, again, so, I, as a fan, I know that my personality, I would just wouldn't be, it wouldn't work for me. I would be very upset. I think like some people might have that and I envy them, but I oh, also here think it is. this. Sorry, I found it. One a natty, let's forfeit this season. That's yeah. That, no, that's different than what I was talking about. That's fine. To act like you don't care is as disingenuous, I think, to most fans with the pulse. If you're like, yeah, I would, I don't need to watch them play the rest of the year. I want to get to the off season and see what happens. I don't need to watch us lose seventy nothing to Ohio State. I know it's coming. It's going to happen. They're going to let all their demons out. They will not stop throwing or running on us. That's fine. Like I would <sighs> like to fork for the season. That's everyone, got, everyone got a COVID strand because I'm ready to go to the off season for them, but. Yeah, I still would do the deal. The title, you can't you can't let it go. I'm not watching highlights right now because I'm so angry, but I will. It'll it'll age better. The roller coaster ride of it, yeah, it certainly hurts. You'd like to maybe ease into this drop. This is like a top throw dragster drop. We're just straight down. Back to the starting blocks. Do you Evan on Saturday was, you know, admittedly happy about Michigan losing. Yeah, and credit to him. He was one of the first people to say this team's just bad. He's right. Yeah, whatever he, he told you in T B C he was right. He, he pulled some receipts, or he didn't pull receipts, but he was just like, "Yeah, I can't believe." I don't want to call Evan out, but you know, basically, ten and two, eleven and one. We're going back to the playoff. Why can't we win the national championship again? Not everyone was saying that, but obviously, there's some Michigan fans out there. Big Ten is still ours. Ohio State still has to beat us to beat us. Blah blah blah. 
And meanwhile, Evan Cadmus is just sitting in TBC telling you, you know what, you guys, your team's just not very good. <laughs> and yeah. it's crazy that he was right because Evan is one of the most biased people on the planet when it comes to Michigan State and Michigan. But, yeah, I think he hit it spot on. And I think a lot of Michigan State fans had the Shiro Moore question marks, new staff, new players, no quarterback. But I can see how you could easily get talked into thinking that the team would be very good again because – us Michigan State fans did it after the playoff appearance with Tyler O'Connor, and then we went three and nine. So, I think it helps you guys live that. So you kind of yeah, knew. we had a we had a feeling that it could because every time every time I had seen my team go to the playoff, they got better the next year. Yeah, through the, the three years, though. same quarterback. Yep. who happened to be a top ten draft pick. Yeah, <laughs> I think I know. I, like I remember, it was like a month before the season. I was fully in on eight and four, which is still not going to happen. I was still too generous, but at least it's closer. And then. Classic fandom. I got to ten and two because I was like, you know what, whatever. Like we can go ten and two. I do maintain if they had a Diego Pavia, they have one loss oh, right wow. now to Texas. You know, yes. like they are. Yes, yeah, because Diego's a Heisman candidate. I mean, yeah, of course. <laughs> there's still there's still like a good. There's a framework of a good team. The coaching staff is a lot of question marks, a lot to be desired. But like the most important position in football is like. It is John O'Corn levels. Even John O'Corn scored like 20 points against Ohio State, which is not happening this year with this team. So I don't know. Like Question. it's Yeah. So I've seen a lot. All right. Before we get going, Derek Henry just ran like 90 yards. Oh, he didn't score though. Oh, uh, why would you well, do you're that? Already, you're already fine. <laughs> why would you do that? Sorry. Right, you've seen a lot. of. He was about to score and then he got t- taken out. 81 yard carry. Oh, my God. He didn't score. Yeah. No. Come on, Derek. You've seen a lot of people say – or yeah, something. I've seen that the uh, – but, yeah, listen, I'm a sicko. I don't like Michigan. I'm just going to admit that. It's, yeah. it's just fine, and it brings me joy and whatever. It's sad, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that the, uh, the the locker room is fractured. Leaders don't want to lead. Some of the – like I read one of those bums for bums articles. Ellis or someone else, you know, people that we don't really trust, but whatever, um, said basically like the bus ride home or plane. I don't know if to take a bus or plane was like Five everyone plane. was in a uh, zombie mode, just like staring out like what the f- happened to us. And then like the leaders are also like just zombie mode. And like there's going to be questions about who's going to start sitting out for their NFL draft reasons and yada yada yada. and just like full-blown locker room implosion and i just wanted to get your thoughts on the validity of that if you think that's true if you think it isn't true i mean i'm not going to speculate on that stuff one i don't trust those reporters and two i don't either that's that's their personal business but i did i go back again there was there was thoughts of good takes from grant being an unbiased fan of his team, I said in the offseason, this could be one of the, again, Ohio State never fell this bad, but like that Ohio State blueprint where like you're going to have four or five like high level, potentially first round draft picks, but like the leadership that was there isn't the same. And then that those are the teams where like you look back and like, wow, how do we have so many draft picks? But our record was terrible. I said that going in and I, I want to make this point because everyone is so easy to point fingers at the coaches. And I, I agree that it has to start there. But from listening to Jim Harbaugh, the best coach in Michigan history, he said a thousand times that last year they won the title. This team, I don't even have to coach. And he proved it. He didn't go to game day a few times because he was suspended. That team was led by Sander Still, Mike Barrett, Blake Corum, Jenkins, Keegan, Zach Zinter. Blake wrote down the ca- what a I'm so deep that I was looking up 2023 captains, read all the names. I was like, yes, those guys, those guys ran that team. Your captains this year, there's some good ones. So I'm not calling out all of them and I'm not going to given specifics, but Makari Page, Donovan Edwards, Rod Moore, not his fault. He got hurt. Rod Moore got hurt in the offseason. So, yeah, you can't do much not being on the field. Max Preston, he's fine. Josiah Stewart, dog. But, like, you look at the captains, you look at by language, things they say, it's just different. You know, Makari Page got benched in Illinois for a freshman, came in. It's like the, the best teams in college football are player-led or they're scared shitless of their coach like Kirby Smart, and we don't have that. So there has to be – blame for the leaders of the team and yeah do and honestly this might be a hot take from michigan fans i don't care if will johnson sits out if i were him i would sit out why are you going to risk getting injured for your nfl career at this point he won a title i understand it's soft maybe that's not how i'd be wired but like honestly are you going to go out there and try to like risk your millions of dollars for a team that doesn't have a quarterback it's not his fault he's had multiple pick sixes he won us the usc game with a pick six 
they we I'd be so mad if I was a defensive player on this team. It would piss me off. So is credit there, to them for actually trying. Is there any part of you that feels bad for Loveland and Will Johnson who were offered just absolute NIL bags to go somewhere good? Uh like Keon Sapp got offered to go to Alabama. Or is it like, oh buddy, you should stay. You won a national championship here. You're a no, I mean, I feel yada, yada, yada. I feel more bad for Loveland like actually staying here and playing. Cause again, he's somehow managing 70 receiving yards like per game basically when he plays with this like quarterback situation. It's almost increasing his stock more in my mind that he's somehow getting a way to get that open and catch these jump balls that are being thrown to him. So I feel more bad for him in um Khalil Mullins, like it's almost like the guys that are actually trying or like trying to make plays, I feel even more indebted to that they're going through this. So I do feel bad for them. Yeah, they probably should have left. It'd be more fun. Last question. If you had to predict, what's more likely? Michigan beats Oregon or Ohio State, or Michigan doesn't win another football game this season? The second thing you said. Good. I don't think it's. I hate doing that, and it's not even close. I don't it's think not it's that close of a decision. Close. I don't I – mean, I have one question. Okay, yeah. Okay, um, I was reading some Michigan comments on our – Are you a sicko too, Evan? Jeez. Some Michigan <laughs> fan porn. <laughs> yes, I was. Um, can you identify the two <laughs> bad teams remaining on your schedule? Bad? Yep. I mean, bad's a harsh word. Uh, we did watch Northwestern just boat race Maryland – in um what you call it if you were gonna say bad you i guess you could say northwestern but i would just call them below average Are they, is bad worse than below average yes yeah so below average but we're also below average and we might be bad one side of our ball is bad bad like dookie bad the other is like above average because the defense is being asked to do a lot so i don't have to i don't have to okay. if people are saying michigan state's bad then they're just ignorant we're not there's bad. a michigan comment in, underneath our tweet saying who, you asked the question, who who are the teams that Michigan beats the remaining schedule? And one of the comments oh, yeah. that I saw first was, Michigan beats the two bad teams remaining on the schedule. Just one guy said Indiana, and he bookmarked it. And I can't wait to dunk on him as a Michigan fan when they <laughs> beat us by 35. <laughs> like He's like, Indiana, we won't lose to them. I was like, are you sure? <laughs> I mean, we're going to get dragged by them. Is that guy watch college football? <laughs> if it works back, especially. Right. Purdue scored 50 one. points against Illinois. Yeah, they have a court. Yeah. Oh God, Alex, you brought it up. <laughs> they have a quarterback. <laughs> just... You're sicko. You're such an asshole. They have a, they have a quarterback. You're no, not... it's fair. It's crazy. Purdue stink, though. Purdue's terrible. Look at this stat: Michigan quarterbacks this season: three passing touchdowns, nine interceptions, three fumbles. Uh, I mean, what is that? What? That's not even high school football. That's worse than high school worse football. Than high school football. That's like wherever Stallions coaches. Like, what is that? Mumford High School, baby. I mean, it's. Do you go back to Davis or? No, I think you should go Orgy. Because well, he's the times. only one. He threw one pick against Minnesota, but he's the least likely to turn it over. I can't watch turnovers. I can't. I don't want to see Edwards carry the ball in the Michigan State game. I want <sighs> Mullins 35 times. And if you can tell me that's too much for a kid, Ashton Ginty does it like every week. I need him 30 times. That would tell me they actually have a pulse and there's some brain power. They realize that eight weeks too late, but there's a little bit cooking in there that, oh, maybe that's our best chance to win. Also, for people that like talk about how bad it is, this I see a lot of people saying Rich and uh, Hoke, they're glossing over how bad the COVID year was. When we got blown up by Wisconsin by 40 at home on primetime, ABC, that was that was as low as this. So let's not just overlook Jimbo's year, bad though. COVID year. I mean, you can look at it now, but at the time, this felt as bad. Um, also, my official stance on the coaching. I'm not going to just sit here talking that we need sweeping coaching changes. I'm not ready to do that right now and, and since we're still in the season, but I'm not going to argue with anyone that says they want Sharon Moore gone because at the end of the day, it's his fault for and them for not having a quarterback. I'm tired of the excuses. Also, I asked the question online. Everyone's mind. What is going on with Jane Davis? Alex talked to you earlier. I'm not buying the rumor about, about the today. I'm not buying the rumor about the parents. If that's true, then I don't want him to play here. That's just ridiculous. The rumor is his dad, level. his dad is full blown helicopter dad manages him and they do not his parents Evan if you don't know do not want him to play this year he did not even travel to Illinois is what I heard then he's got to go I there's no place for that are you in really going to carry four football. quarterbacks to a team you don't you don't bring your entire roster on on away games just FYI you'd be the fourth like quarterback you're position. not bringing four quarterbacks over a different if, position of need. yeah in the transfer portal era he's he can we'll just get someone next year he's I, gone you can't Illy. you can't 
that's fine. That's good, actually. Because, like, if you if you don't want your son to compete for a job, there's not. You're, J.J. McCarthy was thrown into the fire in East Lansing his freshman year and fumbled, and he grew from that. I don't need to see a parent protecting their kid. This is a golden, like, the right family is like, this is a golden opportunity for my son to show that he's worth something. Like, you couldn't imagine a better situation as a freshman to be thrown into to actually, like, prove you that you're good. I don't I don't think this team makes a bowl game. Um, I'm seven. What else? Do you guys have four wins? Yeah. 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 But I, if we lose Oregon, we, Ohio State, I, Michigan State, Indiana, we Michigan State. Michigan State beat them October 26th. Just wait and see. Has it yeah, happened? Northwestern is the only game I can see them win. Three turnovers to zero. Also, special teams is disgusting. That's a sign of a terrible team. Heard the punt team was very bad. I oh he's he and he was good. That's the crazy thing. He's dropped off the average punt of 30 yards, fake punt that they got on us, blocked field goal that we had. What do you guys um, do during the bye week? That is a great question. I mean, you think I was I think, mean for bringing up the Purdue fifty point thing? Come on, that was honestly. Worse. I may not blame them. I think they probably were just on the phone with Portnoy talking about getting that three million in cash, and they were just <laughs> planning how we're going to use that. Like I think they're just or recruiting for next year. Like I might, they may have punted, but I don't know. Maybe they got promises from Ward. It's getting to the point though. Where, again, Ward's his own guy. I don't expect him to do anything, but like you're going to make enough donors mad that they're not going to give you an off season if you if they lose out, everyone has to go. What's the tipping point? Even, if they lose Saturday, is it over, you think? It's going to get a lot of donor calls, I think. I yeah. think it's probably over. It's a big – It's and again, like Michigan I said – say it's a chance to end Sherman Moore's short career. That's where we're at. <laughs> well, no, because if he plucks off an Oregon or Ohio State, that saves you, which I, we will not happen. Yeah, that's not happening, especially if, if you're not being in Michigan State. I, if, if they lose out, it's a no-brainer. That's embarrassing. If they only beat Northwestern the rest of the way, I think he's gone. You have to yeah, beat us. Well. You have to beat Northwestern. The fans you have to make probably, a game. probably want you to beat Indiana. They will. Yeah, they will. don't see how you're going to do that. Well, they'll want you gone. I mean, I it's, there's a really good, awesome fan on uh, Twitter called M Victors, and he does the uh, the what is your mood? He's been doing it since 2013. After every week, he asks the fan base like, "What's your mood?" And like, he gets 200 something replies, and he keeps an index of it and averages them all out. Um, <laughs> There's different tiers. Like once you get down to, let me look at it because I put it in my comment. I said I it was at sauce. sixty. Yeah, sixty-eight. I'll try to share it with you guys. It's re- it's really good stuff. Um, but and also like I use it because I want to know like, am I crazy? I'm actually more slightly more positive than the average, which is which is not saying a lot. So this is it. So it's from a hundred all the way down to forty, and he has the tiers of like where your thoughts are at at that time. It's a well done graphic. Michigan started at ninety three this year. We're at 58 right now. So less than 500 team. It's messy. Changes are mandatory. Ann Arbor, Torch, and Pitchfork Fork sold out. Personal lives are impacted. <laughs> um, I said I'm at 60. I'm right at the yellow-orange cutoff. What is We're sub out of, 40? Uh, what does it say? The sad trough of de- disillusionment. I don't care. So we have hit rock bottom this year. Oh, you can see right there how we've trended. 93, 91, 82, 76. A little bump after USC. 79, 68, 67, 58. Torch and pitchfork You time lost the bye week. You went down one. You went yeah. down after the bye week. That's crazy. And then he has the chart all the way throughout this entire stretch of Michigan fandom since 2013. Dude. Before 2020. 2015 was also dog shit. Right before. So that's the easiest way. We're basically going to be close to that. Damn, 2020 got deep then. We're not even to 2020 yet. I'm there. It's, it's really bad. Yeah. You're lower than 2020. But granted, if no, you did this chart for us last That's year, 2022. we hit rock bottom. 2020 is under oh, this yeah. dumb. Oh, yeah. yeah, I see that. Wait, so what was... Oh, that was after... I'd have to go 2021, look, but, that's after... Oh, yeah, it, it shows every chart. Yeah. After the Michigan State game, it got dark, down to 77. That's not that low. That's not that that's low. That's not that low. Pre-season, Pre-season 60, though. 60. Go yeah. to 2020. It was probably then. Yeah. 48. Oh, my God. So that 40. graphic on the bottom is not lined up correctly. Yeah, he needs to fix yeah. his numbers a little bit. But yeah, great graph nonetheless. Michigan oh, yeah. States so we're, we're the, lo- we're the lowest year. since we lost MSU COVID year. So that was a 60. That's the All lowest, gone. man. Also our dignity. Well, well no, it's been lower, but like that's where we're hovering around is that feeling. Paul gone. Also our dignity. That is good. I can also, I can relate to that Indiana. I've never been more mad watching a football game than Indiana. Clan up. That pissed me off. Cage shines with three overtimes versus Rutgers. 
up four points. <laughs> Lifeless versus Owen Five Penn State. COVID canceled. Plus twenty eight. That we should look back at that. We were plus twenty. We'll be more than that, or that versus Ohio State this year. We should look at that spread. Eh, plus twenty eight versus the bug. Solid signing day. <laughs> wow, manhandled in Madison. Oh my God. Yeah, these are. This is a great chart. I love this, this guy. This is. This is good. Buckeyes do it again. Sixty four. <laughs> Shea is Drop the Messiah. 20. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> MSU pounded. Paul paraded. Wow. Hammer, hammered in the game down to 80. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Yeah, that's that's nice that shit. chart. That's very good. I like that. So our game to close us out, um, I think you can tell the story of this game with the betting line. A couple weeks ago, start of the season, this was plus 22 Michigan State. Then to plus nine. Perfect. Then the seven and a half. And now I think it's around five or five and a half. Last time I saw it was five. Question. Plus five. Yes, Alex. Do you guys think that outside of Nick Marsh and Aiden Childs, that Michigan State's roster is putrid? Putrid? No, you got a really good center. Putrid? No. Pydent's good. Billings, center's good. Fine. I like some of our pieces on the defensive line. I like Ed Woods, my guy. Jordan Turner's a good player. Woods and Martinez in the back end. Brantley was rated high on PFF. Darius Snow came back Brantley's and played good. a lot of meaningful snaps. So not putrid. Yeah. That's how we feel. No, putrid's no. crazy. Putrid's too extreme. I would say so too. People are texting you about it. I'm someone, sure someone someone texted me that. Yes, I went. To, I did the the whole position advantage thing. Oh yeah, I went through it. Let's hear it. You want it? I yeah. think that was pretty fair. We can. Again, I'll call you coaching. out if you're wrong. Coaching MSU. Correct. Bingo. Q, QB MSU. Yes. Good. Wide receiver MSU. Three for three. I like that. Linebacker MSU. Oh, yeah, four for four. If you feel Barham that did play his best game of the year against Illinois, but linebacker MSU. Jordan Turner's good, good player. The Iowa game sold me. Special teams MSU. Yeah, okay. I'm confident in all of those five. I don't think there's any debate. Yeah, I would okay. agree with you. These is where there's some leans. I go tight end Michigan. He's going to be a top whatever pick. Yeah, yes. I, I agree with you. Our tight end's good, but not that good. I might be biased here, but I still think Khalil Mullins carries the room. So I think running back is the best. For Michigan. Agreed. I think Mullins is better. Correct. Lynch Adams um, is good, but not Mullins. I'm still with the NFL talent. I know they don't mesh well all the time, but defensive line still can wreck a game. Josiah Stewart's playing unbelievable. I'm going to go defensive line Michigan. At the top, Michigan State probably better top to bottom. More depth. We play like 15 guys on the defensive line. That could be fair. Yeah, I don't. Our, we don't have much depth. Uh, Rayshon Benny might be back. I don't know. He was out, but yeah. Um, and then I kind of just left blank offensive line secondary. I think for me, offensive line, I do think they're a good run offensive line for Michigan. Their pass offensive line is not bad, but it's not good. It doesn't help that Jack Tuttle won't throw the ball. So I And you guys were impressive. So I think you're better at pass blocking, I would say. We also I'm have a Michigan mobile edge. QB who makes it look like we never get sacked because he can just do crazy things in the pocket. And we have the opposite. I would split it because I think Michigan's run offensive blocking has carried them quite a bit. Yeah, um, Michigan State offensive line against that. Iowa, which is the first time all year we've played the same guys the entire game, which is interesting, right before the Michigan game. They were pretty good, but I still think Michigan, I would give them an advantage. They're, they're more used um, to it. And then secondary, I still left it. I, I, I'm i pissed off at my team, so I'd lean Michigan State, but you could like convince me that if Will Johnson plays and he gets a pick six, like that can elevate the team. I, I don't know. I would just go Michigan State because that. Overall, Again, our I think def- Michigan State is better. Defense our defense is asked to do a lot of mean things, and they get thrown at a lot because our team can stop the run for the most part. It just depends on the situation. Um, so I'll leave with that. But confident in the first five for MSU, I think Michigan comfortably has running back, tight end. Give them D- DL. So I think O-line secondary are a little bit more in the mix. Yeah. But coaching probably matters the most of all those. Was and say scheme, coaching. Goal, coaching. Back, I would say. All that, yeah. It's gotta yeah. be. Michigan I like doing State. that exercise when we play because everyone always. Usually, it's more. Then contentious, last year but it was Michigan everything. I think you said. Yeah, I, yeah, and I, I think you gave us way. special teams. We'll Maybe ourselves. We were, yeah. good, we were good at punting, though. Maybe punting. Punter. Yeah. Yeah. Doman was not playing great. I don't know if we had to punt that game though. Yeah, probably not. I don't know. Wow. I are, I'll say different. Rage 
rage bet. Um, I waited till all the games ended on not all the games, but like our games were done comfortably. They put out the seven and a half line, put 20 bucks on that Michigan state. Glad I got it then. Cause I like being across the hook of a touchdown. I don't think it'll matter. I also put 10 on money line with like plus two twenty. So I'm hoping to make some money on Saturday night. Are I you, don't, you're rooting for Michigan, but put all your money on Michigan state. I don't, I'm not rooting for Michigan. I'm going to be watching LSU, Texas A&M and watching with apathy <laughs> that other game. Christ. <laughs> Like, let's just – this is where I'm at. Five and yeah, I, mean, I, I respect it. There's no one if who's he, just more – puts his feet in the ground, standing his ground, fandom than you. You just – I respect it. Put the money where my mouth is. Oh, well, my that was a little God. Why J-Mo I emotion, but. is getting suspended for PEDs. No. No wonder we didn't use them. Is that a real Is that breaking? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, two games. Not That's bad. nothing. It's not bad. Oh, first game, though. Dude. Damn it. What is he taking? Why can't he Tennessee. get it figured out? What, why? Horse tranquilizer. I thought he had it figured out, finally. I just said he someone, looks like he's always having fun. Someone did a, a broken heart. You said heart. he was it's a team guy, games, guys. That's not a very team guy of him. He probably didn't even know what, what he was taking. God, Team Coup is falling apart. That's what they get. <laughs> Karma always comes back and bites you in the ass, huh? Team Coup. They're not going to like when they hear that. Nope. What was he taking, though? All right. Ah, uh, This well, is why well, we have Khalif Raymond. Yeah. Khalif Raymond, and pick him up. Well, we can, yeah, well, man, don't let Connor. If we beat Green Bay at Green Bay without Hutchinson and J-Mo, oh, it could be mean. <laughs> Two games. It must have been like... Nothing. Drop of it. He went into GNC or something and got the wrong thing. Well, it's just all. Well, sorry. Who cares? Back man. to the game. What did I say? Oh, yeah. I put my money where my mouth is with the bet. It was a little emotional because I was so mad at the team. But let me say this. I'm not totally detached from the rivalry. It would be cool to win this game just for the sole fact of like when you guys chirp us as it gets to worse, we lose by 70 to Ohio State. I can say, well, we beat you. Like that would be a nice card to have in my pocket. Okay. I'm not I would sure like to have that. So State, Similar to Evan, he had that when they won the Big Ten in 2021. It's like, well, Kenneth Walker scored five touchdowns on you. Like, it's just ni- it's nice to have well, that card. Right, yeah, but you said that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I agree, but I'm going to use it if it if it <sighs> comes to it. Only if someone says anything well, first. I'm just like, well, if one of our teams win the national championships, but the other one beats the other team, we can't use this. Everyone agreed, and we're, then I said, no, absolutely not. Connor I would say title, I would never it. use it. Yeah, I'm not stupid. If it's a close game, yeah, I would like to see them win. It'd be whatever. But it's like, and I don't know if this is the, what Marissa's point was about the spoiledness of winning a title. It just doesn't feel that impactful to me to be like, I'm not, I would never call this game my Super Bowl. I had aspirations higher than that to go into the year, and now I'm sad that they're all gone. And so, sure, it's cool to be your in-state rival to have for like trash talking with your friends, but I don't really care that much. This game is massive for what I said in Baton Rouge of Michigan State winning out and going nine and three. So, still, on the other end, yeah, still on track. Like, so, this is my radio question for you guys, um, Evan. You're a rare breed because you'll never. You always think Michigan State should beat Michigan. So, mm-hmm. I guess I'm talking to Alex and other listeners that. Going into this year after a 49 nothing game, we're not expecting to be this game be that tight. Okay, potentially. I think the stakes, it's not how, to me, it's not house money. I think the stakes have been raised with how you played last week and how Michigan played. You're, this is the angst I was talking about. Are you at this point now where there's that anxiety and there's going to be that pit in your stomach at kickoff? Like, man, if we lose this, this is a blown opportunity and this really, really sucks and I'm embarrassed. Not embarrassed, maybe, but like really disappointed. A hundred percent. I hate that Michigan lost last week and the way that they lost. I wanted this is Michigan the to be the first that. time since 2010 Michigan is coming into this game off of a loss. Hmm. What was so your point? You were saying, Evan, you wanted them to win? I wanted them to. to well, I never wanted For Michigan your emotions? To win. I or? never wanted Michigan to win, but they're now seen as the underdog because they're not playing great. They lost two in a row. Hmm. I don't um, see them. Nationally, you just an underdog. Continue. I don't care about the past, Alex. I'm saying currently, right now. I don't think anyone thinks they're an underdog. They're so going to be a good. hot. Michigan State is going to be the hottest money line dog pick of the week. Has to be. Has to be. I'd love to see the handle That's on that. Why the I national like it. I think it's media be a close game. doesn't like our team at all. <laughs> no, they're flipping. They're flipping. 
Cover three, you listen to that podcast. Man. They think yeah. they thought last week we were dog water and we were going to before get that. Dogs. And then the live game, Tom Fernelli was saying, you know, who's like winning the night is uh, Ain Childs. Yeah, because our so people are our fan base is going at him on Twitter. But um, anyways, I think that it is partial house money in the sense that oh, Michigan won the national championship last year. Everyone. I mean, Michigan State's coming off probably the worst season in program history, blah, blah, blah. We all know the past. There is house money in that regards. Also, no. at the same time, though, preseason, Evan and I are talking about like we thought we could compete with Michigan this year before we had seen anything. It's definitely true now. I don't think in any season in my entire life have I had never not felt anxious before this game felt nervous for this game and was like bracing to lose. And then knowing that if we lost, I would feel terrible and it would suck. And then we missed an opportunity. I feel like that every year. Not last year. Come on. Last year was probably the only time where it's like, yeah, you're going to get housed. Just start preparing. But other than that, I could talk myself into Michigan State winning every single year. And it hurts pretty much just as bad every time when we lose. No matter I feel like this the is circumstances. A, I feel like this is a real hurt, though. Like, I'm, maybe this is the Evans point. Like, he's always like, I don't expect to lose to Michigan, which is fine. But, like, sometimes you tip your cap, like, yeah, they're just a wagon this year, and that was going to be tough. This year, though, Evan, if you lose to this Michigan team after they've done the last I will week, lose sleep. Really, I will really lose sleep. Of yeah. <laughs> this is a, last year, this is a full, I got yeah, perfect, six year stomach feeling. I got perfect night's sleep last year. Last year, fine. But if you throw last year out, and maybe you throw out the 20. 2019. 2022, where were you at? Were you feeling like, I know... Keon Coleman Keon lost Coleman. a bunch of guys. I mean, there that felt like a game for a minute. Yes, I, I talked did not sleep well that night because we all started fighting each other. That was, yeah. That was different I circumstances. I talked myself into that game for sure. <laughs> the only other one I can think of was I turned down going to the one where Shea Patterson destroyed us at Michigan because ah, I knew Ah, 42-7, 49-7. I was there. Michigan State had a 7 nothing leave after one. That was the only other yeah. one where I was like, oh, we don't stand a chance in this game, and I can just do whatever and go on with my day. Almost every other game, it's 50-50. I feel like we can win. It's a rivalry game, blah, 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 and it hurts bad, and I don't sleep, and then I think about it for a month. Um, so I'm going to feel that way this game. House money is probably not the right term. No. But it is a chance to really like end them. Like really, your chip should be all in. You guys should be all in. The chance I was to you guys, and I watch my quarterback in them and yeah. be done with it. Yeah, like, I want to do that, but I'm just nervous just for it because Michigan's the got their backs up against the wall. I would be crushed if Michigan's if I was a Michigan State fan, they lost this. Yeah, I'm crushed, crushed, crushed regardless. I'm not trying to be a sicko. And I flip will it. be I crushed. Just would be absolutely do. crushed. Yeah, I, of course. I would have been three weeks ago if you told me. Uh, this. I'm so happy. You know what? No, I'm not happy. It sucks, but I am kind of happy that Illinois killed me last week because then that would be this would be my <laughs> game, which I've already lived with COVID the 2022 year with Connor Hayward. That was I was just a crumb. That, that that was one of those games where you know. But if we're taking silver linings, Illinois already killed me. I'm already dead. Uh, what is it? what's the over under? Did I write down in the 40s? Five and a half, five, 40 and a half. I don't, I don't know what Vegas has seen. If you wanted to say like a minus two and a half, maybe to be generous, I don't know why they put it in the five and a half range, range and opened it at seven and a half. That was the easiest bet I've ever made. I was like seven and a half. How is Michigan winning by 10? They think that. How are they scoring uh, 10? They think Aiden Giles is going to turn the ball over a lot. That's why. They must. I don't. And he could. He's proven to do that this year. Is it, is it simplifying enough? I know like, we're not the biggest, we're not going to get a crazy X's and O's preview, but I really think if my key to the game would just be if Michigan State's O-line can keep him relatively clean. Not perfectly clean, just relatively. The only way I think Michigan can linger in this game is, is the two factors of if they can heat up Childs and if they can run the ball four yards a carry. That's pretty much it. And they may still lose that way. Yeah, I think if Michigan's under four yards of carry and Childs is working with a clean pocket and using his feet and running around and doing his little razzle-dazzle that he can do, yeah, there's no reason Michigan State should lose in those scenarios. Like, unless Michigan grows a passing game overnight, which I don't see it, and I think Michigan State's secondary is good enough to play man up on them. 
maybe you help a little bit on Loveland, but that's it. I mean, if any of the receivers burn one of your DBs, I'd bench them for at least a couple drives. <laughs> like, what are you doing? And I mean, our we don't have a ton of experience on our team, but our defense does have seniors and juniors in the defensive backfield and at linebacker. Which who guards Loveland? That's the only matchup I'm even remotely Jordan thinking Hall, about. Probably Jordan no. Turner. It's not going to be Cal Halliday. It'd be a nightmare. Like a like a safety you I throw down on Gross. him. Was covering some of Iowa. Well, it's so hard because Iowa is freaking all. We titles. play a lot of. I don't think we're just going to have a set guy on him. I think we're just going to rotate. I think Woods or Martinez most Spencer, likely. Lee Spencer on Club Loveland. I would feel pretty good about. As long as it's not gross, I'm okay with it. It sucks for the secondary because that is like the most stressful job maybe on the field, and then the rest of the guys are like just playing patty cake with their matchup. Yeah. <laughs> I bet it'll be a mixed bag, and we'll probably drop into zone on third downs when he's a factor. Okay, bracket. If they're going to throw coverage him, safety over top of him, and let everyone else. We I mean, could probably sit in the soft zone and make Michigan beat us, and I don't even know if they can do. That. Well, this is the one. That's actually a good point, Alex. I was thinking about this. There's a there's a danger to this when people always talk about selling out, stacking the box. You do run into danger sometimes, like Jim Knowles did, and teams do, like when the the Vikings did you line up all those guys. And if you miss one tackle, that person diamond Edwards, but could crib if, if he hits one hole one time yeah. in the safety or who's there misses. So Caleb it's Johnson, almost like you one time you almost need like a, you need like a cushion run defense where it's like still not everyone walked up. Uh, I'm sure Evan would know better about yeah. like how that has to look, but I wouldn't put like everybody on the line. Cause that still can be a disaster. Play sometimes. Cover two, cover four, not cover two, cover two or cover six. It'd be interesting to see if we could down. stop the run without – like against Iowa, we full sold out everyone down almost like every first and I think you, have a, you just need to have a good mixture of it, obviously. Can you can you stop Michigan without having to do that and just playing your normal like base defense? Can you stop the run doing that? If that's the case, then I don't think it would be. Win first close. down, I think a lot of it fixes itself if you just win first down. And Michigan's been terrible on first down. Yeah, really second down. I feel like Michigan State's defense against Iowa was very good on first and second down. Uh, Third down, I think they had more third down conversions than we did. Michigan State's defense this year has only been bad against high-profile passing attacks where we just sit back and let them run. I don't think we have to worry about that in this game. Michigan should should only pass. Michigan should only try a forward pass if it's third or seven or longer. Chuck Brantley. That's it. First down should run. Second down should run. Third and seven or longer, you can pass. Question for you, Grant. Is Michigan if throwing an interception today or on Saturday? Yeah, they have to. It's part of the script. They can't <laughs> not. <laughs> it's Charles Jr. Pick you. six to Will Johnson. That feels no. likely. Uh, I don't. I think it's more likely Will Johnson doesn't play Which than fun. that. I f- know for a fact if Will Johnson plays, he will bait Aiden Giles into a pick six. I feel pretty I con- it, confident saying that. Maybe I don't know. Baited, that's, that's, uh, that's a play you need in this type of game. I just like. I don't think it'd if be Michigan, enough. if Kirk Campbell again, we're already basically right in the door on him. But if he has any sort of like stones, he'll watch Penn State versus USC and figure out how to use Colson Lovin like that, or he'll come up with. Why, why don't they just run the Lions trick play to like their backup tight end while everyone looks at Loveland and run that little wheel? Like I just don't – they don't do anything creative. They did one creative play this game where they gave a handoff to Loveland and it went for a first down, and everything else is just vanilla handoffs. So if they have any of that, that one, they should not have saved it this long. But if somehow, God forbid, they did, like what are you waiting for? Your job's on the line. Uh, one That's Michigan gross. fan told me 33-16 Michigan. Thoughts on that? I don't like. I don't know how you get to thirty three ever. <laughs> I, I we haven't scored more than thirty all year, even against Arkansas State. I don't understand. Seven hundred points against Arkansas State were from a pick six. We'd have to get two defensive touchdowns, and Samaj would have to crib a kick to even sniff thirty points. That's how bad it is. Alex, well, our it's kickoff worse return, than the our kickoff, academy schools. Our kickoff was pretty shaky. It, it's wor- we are worse than academy schools. Oh, well, that's. Oh, the academies are good. Yeah, maybe it's not the best example this year. No, I know what you're saying. But so no, no, would, no world of thirty three sixteen because I didn't feel like that was realistic. But if Michigan won this game, it'd be like fourteen to thirteen. 
or 12. It'd be all Jonathan Kim field goals and just disaster in the red zone for the so Spartans. Like, and when, Michigan got one defensive touchdown and one rushing drive. That would have to be how you win. 12, Alex. Yeah, the game we already watched once. 12-10. What was reverse, maybe seven, where maybe, Michigan kicked all field yeah. goals and we scored the two touchdowns? So, okay, actually, this would be, it'd be it'd be seventeen fifteen Michigan. Five field goals for Michigan State, one defensive touchdown for Michigan, one Cleo Mullins rushing drive, and a field goal from Zavada, and that would be the game. If Michigan the wins the toss, are you taking the ball? Yeah, I would. What do you have to lose? Your dignity already gone. Michigan State wins it. <laughs> you freaking defer. We defer for sure, but. <laughs> They did go out the yeah. field and We're score on the same page on USC right I guess away. Michigan's getting the ball first. Have to. To have to run it with Cleo Mullins 10 times in a row. And if you stop it, you lost. <laughs> you should have a good scripted first drive. If you, you, I feel like but Michigan has to score on the first drive to that's, have a real that's, shot. That's the maddening thing is that we tried to get cute. The first play against Illinois, we tried hitting a bomb down the sideline to a guy that's caught one pass all year. It's like, you idiots, run the ball. That's the only thing you have going for you. You have one of the better, grittier running backs in the country. Is Michigan and the only throwing good the kitchen sink at us this week? I mean, this has been a long time since we've talked about something like this. There's no kitchen sink to throw. Are we going to see some trick like plays by Michigan? Like, they're that desperate to win this game. It's an honor. There's, there's, it's an honor for I mean, the national champions to want to beat us that bad. If there's not – well, but it's not that. It's just that this is your only chance of moving the ball. Yeah, <sighs> that's crazy. Now, keep in mind, we've ran the flea flicker – like five times this year, and usually it's just a 10 yard crossing route, is what we can complete if we complete it. I, I, I'm serious. I feel bad. I don't even know what to say because <laughs> you're being serious. Uh, yeah, I've watched it all. I watched Jay Johnson offenses for three years, so I don't feel that bad for you. I'm going to go final score 27 10 Spartans. I feel good about that. Boy, I would feel if, good. Defense is going to look worse than they actually are. Again, they've been put in an impossible spot all year. And I do think, this is my last point, is that if it if it goes poor early for Michigan, I could see just the full checkout go on. Like, quit in the middle of the game type of deal. I just pray, God, I hope they don't do any, like, if we go down, don't do any dirty shit. Just take your loss. Be a man. Don't do any stupid rivalry shit. Please, yeah, don't, don't beat someone up in the tunnel. Who, I didn't, who I'm, not, do that. I'm just saying, I just, I'm I get so frustrated. That. I get so mad when my team that I watch like starts fighting when they're down 50. Like, just shut up and go to the locker room. Yeah. If it turns early on Michigan, like, you could see some quitting going on for sure. Michigan's Poor been good at home this year, next year. Haven't lost at home besides Texas. Good stat. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's see your guys' predictions 29 13. <laughs> 16 point. Mine was 17. This point. is making right. me nervous. A little too much confidence for me, guys. I, uh, Alex, if Michigan State scores 28 points, we won. Vegas hasn't caught up to Michigan State. They were dead wrong about Iowa. They're dead wrong about this. They haven't caught up to Michigan State. Alex, we just got to score 28 points. That's it. You have to score 21, probably. Probably 17, honestly. We scored seven points against Illinois. 20, 10. Sparks. Good year. Good year. I have to pick Michigan State. Just have to. Yep. I'll be annoyed when I, I'm a sicko. I'll look at the Twitter stuff. I'll be annoyed at the jokes, but like I'm still dead inside. I'm not going to actually be like upset, upset. I know my team is dog shit. I want it on record, though. I wouldn't be stunned if Michigan came out and all of a sudden looked decent and we lost. And oh, correct. We spiraled Michigan's... with a young quarterback. Like I can't what see is that. Decent, what is decent mean, though? second best performance. I expect what you to play like mean? USC, which was okay. Like USC, yeah, let's get Orgy back in there. Bad. I expect that you're going to run the ball okay at times. I do I think you'll probably score an early touchdown. First half Minnesota game. If Tuttle completes like and looks legit passing, I will be absolutely stunned. That would stun me. I don't think you guys are going to put on an offensive clinic. I think your ceiling points wise is like twenty one. Uh, but I could see Childs and your – I still think your defense has enough talent where I could see Childs like making a bad mistake trying to play hero ball, which he did a good job of not doing against Iowa. But then in this game, he's all charged up. No hero ball. Maybe, like a, maybe like a first uh, or second play of a drive after the kickoff. Tries to go for something. Strip sacks it, yeah. and then we get a short field for a touchdown. Like I could see him making like a game-breaking because he's trying to do too much. 
can't do too much if you have the Every lead. Every drive has to end in a kick. That's Amen. all. Amen. That's but Evan, I think Michigan scores on their first drive. Oh. Why? Because the worst friend. team always scores, it seems like, in this game first. Not last year, because we didn't score, but like Keon Coleman here. And man, if Moss if Michigan got if Michigan got the ball first and scored, that would go a long way for uh them having a chance in the game. I, if they go this other way, they're they're done. <laughs> I just think Michigan will start going three and out. Defense will get tired. Michigan State's receivers and quarterback are good enough to expose anybody not named Will Johnson. Good offense coordinator. We'll score points. We'll score points. Minnesota scored points. Come on. Minnesota. Minnesota. All right. That's 187. 33-16 Michigan. <laughs> good happen. Cheers. Good happen. Eight weeks. All right. And it's eight weeks.